On this episode of Decently Indecent, I sat down with my friend Mudahar, known better online as Some Ordinary Gamers, and we had a tangent-filled chat about the state of things, from cults and Scientology, thinking in extremes, censorship, crypto, and also what kind of stims this man must be doing to upload as much content as he does as a successful YouTuber while working a nine to five. Truly remarkable. I really appreciated and enjoyed our conversation together, and I hope you guys find some value in it as well. Thanks so much for tuning in. Mudahar. Thank you so yep. much for joining me for episode four of the Decently Indecent podcast. I love it's, that name. Uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you here. I wanted I wanted your opinion. Is the name kind of gay, or is it is it okay from a third party perspective? I I I, I like the name. Uh, it uh, kind of reminds me of like a podcast. Our our podcast is supposed to be called the Irrelevant Podcast, but it was already okay. taken by somebody. So, kind of sounds. It sounds good. Like. Yeah, you know, it's a good. It rolls name. off the tongue a little bit. I'm always. Yeah. I've been pretty bad at naming things my entire life. I mean, my Leon Lush, my pseudonym, kind of came the same way. It's always been like, is it kind of easy to say? There's always a relationship between the first and second word a little bit, and then you know, initially when I did came up with the Leon Lush thing, this is back before I had ever you know made a dollar online. So I'm you know I had already gone through thirty pseudonyms in my years as a musician. I'm like, you never know what's going to stick or when something's going to work. So a couple years later, all of a sudden, I'm like, well, I guess I'm stuck with this porn name now. <laughs> 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 so yeah. here we are. So I'm kind of in the same boat for the podcast. I think it'll work out, but ultimately, I, at the end of the day, it's like I almost it, feel like everyone's YouTube channel is kind of like that. I don't think I've ever seen any YouTube channel or pseudonym online for any successful creator that's like what they actually wanted, you know, or what they initially, like some ordinary gamers was like, I came up with that name, but it's like, man, in like a heart, but you, you can I feel every creator that's successful doesn't know if they're ever going to be successful. Like, yep. unless you're like an industry plant. So it's like, by the time you get there, it's like, fuck, <laughs> it's so I'm true. here now. <laughs> it's so true. Like even like Oompaville, he's like a fucking businessman, yeah. like multi-company CEO. And his name is fucking Oompaville. He's uploading yeah. like Roblox videos is how he got to come up with that name. Yeah. That's the best though. Cause it's, it's kind of, it's a, it's a testament to the authenticity and it's kind of nice for people that look into it to, to, to kind of see where that came from but even with you again some ordinary gamers it's like well you certainly when you came up with that name i i imagine you weren't thinking it was going to have three and a half million subs on youtube and be running the show no. with multi, like a podcast and multiple businesses no <laughs> Dude, i didn't even think i was going to be running businesses out of this at all <laughs> in general <bro. laughs> that's that one thing i was thinking about too i was like man the uh that whole, like, more money, more problems, more stuff you put on your plate is so, like, true. It's just, mm -hmm. this is the first time in my life when I've actually had, like, a regimented, like, proper sleep schedule. Not because I even want it, you know? Like, I enjoy working at nights, but it's yep. just, like, all my work is done at, like, 7 in the morning. So I'm, like, usually yep. in bed, <laughs> in, like, an hour and a half from now, and then... It's it's almost a it's like required for you to be able to function in the way that you need to, basically, yeah. at, this, at this period in your life. I'm, I'm kind of in a similar place where, as I've... I've gone through phases where I've, you know, taken my foot off the gas a little bit and I'll coast. But now in like starting this new podcast and I brought on another employee to, to help me with some stuff and I'm trying to upload more on the, the main channel and do some things outside of YouTube. I've realized as a 38 year old, I'm like, if I don't have a sound night's sleep, I'm a fucking disastrous mess. And I'm 50% I'm capacity of productivity the next day in you know, granted, like I don't, in your case, you're getting up because you have meetings with other people that rely on those times. For me, I still, I can still kind of craft it in a way that would be a night owl, but I've just found like most of my life I've been a night owl, but as I've taken on a little more responsibility, I find that just having some sort of normalcy to your circadian rhythm, to your sleep schedule can yeah. really accelerate the level at which you can perform and the level at which you can have output and whatever that is, whether it's content or in building a business or whatnot. So is that kind of, is that your experience as you've transitioned? Like you said, you've, I'm sure you've spent years where you're grinding fucking two, 3 AM making videos and shit. And now you're on a little more of a normal sleep I, schedule. What's that I transition think, I think like? that like, bro, that and like getting people to actually like, like delegating stuff. One of the, one of the toughest things, like to this day, YouTube is still very much like a one man show. Like it's still yeah. just me uh, editing and like putting mm -hmm. it together, but like work and business and everything. It's like, bro, finding people to delegate for you and then getting that like schedule built in, bro. I was so used. One of the worst things that YouTube gets you is like, Everyone that starts, obviously, we're all one man shows. Yes. But people stick doing that when they really don't have to. Like mm -hmm. when I was making, when I was making like good money, when I started to, right? 
even then, like I was, I could probably hire out editors and everything, but it was just like nobody. If you're not building this, I don't think people share that passion and grind. You know, you can't like expect them to. Like you can't, they, right? Yeah, like they they don't like even if you even if you're like I'll, I'll split half the AdSense earnings with you, right? Like we'll yep. we'll do like a fifty fifty partnership. It's like unless they have started that, like from your mentality, like from the mentality you like from zero subscribers, like nobody understands like staying up to like three four a.m. to like get something out. When I was working on the save the kids stuff or even the completion of stuff with Carl, yep. yep. Bro, those were like, I want to say like four or five a.m. days. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, those, I mean, those are serious investigations. Yeah. Like, and I, I, one of the things I wanted to just pick your brain about because I've always been in awe as somebody who has known you for several years. You know, I've been on your podcast. We've spoken off and on, but just as a YouTuber, you keep tabs. You see other people in the space, what they're doing. Your level of output is fucking insane. And I, you know, you're, I've always, you know, I like the meme that you're like the, you know, the Indian moist critical, basically, <laughs> which, which I'm sure you've probably heard before, oh, which yeah. is perfect because like it, right now, even like you're in like the, the infrared dark, just like the monitor light illuminating your face. It's like the perfect, like intentional, intentional lack of care for the shit that doesn't matter, which is like, how, how the HD and the lighting and how beautiful everything looks like stuff that really doesn't matter to people that are actually consuming your content. I get, I yeah. go down that rabbit hole sometimes because I'm, I get like a tech bone over stupid shit and things looking nice and the, the F stops and all this yeah. shit that the, the lay viewer could not give a fuck about. <laughs> I talk about <laughs> this with Eli sometimes. <laughs> it's like, cause we're both fucking camera nerds, but the, um, yeah, just the amount of stuff, like just the level, not, not only, just on YouTube, but the podcast and then the amount of YouTube videos you do, but not only the amount of videos, but the length and the amount of research that goes into these videos on top of knowing that you're still pretty much editing all your own shit and you have a fucking day job kind of like a nine to five because you run a company yeah. and you have all these meetings. What, how, how much sleep are you getting and how much cocaine are you doing? Or is it amphetamines? Well, what are we talking about I mean, about here? you know, it's a mix of amph amphetamines for sure. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. bro, I've always, I've always said like YouTube, you can't do YouTube without a little bit of something. Okay. A little like, bit of the like, dust. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You need, little... a little bit, you need a little bit of the Colombian. You need a little bit of the, you know, fucking Jamaican sometimes in you. You need something to like level you out for <laughs> sure. But like, even, even with like sleep, it's like my, my sleep is like usually midnight and then. I wake up myself at like five, like five, like I don't need an alarm for any of that anymore. Like just eyes open. Once my eyes are open, like I'm lucky in that sense. Once my eyes pop up, I can just get out of bed. You know, like I don't lay down or do anything. I had a pretty bad like habit of like checking like social media feeds, I would say like six months ago. Mm -hmm. And then when I realized I'm like, shit, I'm on here for like an hour more than I should get the fuck off of this, <laughs> get some work going. <laughs> what a miserable way to start your day. I suffer from the same proclivity, oh. which is like waking up and immediately grabbing my phone and being like, oh, let me mm -hmm. just pop onto X and doom scroll and see someone get killed real quick before I get out of bed. Dude, I'm I like, swear, what, the what amount of- Why would I want to start my day like that? Bro, the amount of death footage, that's why I like stopped doing it. Cause like, usually it was like, I think it was before Elon took over and like fucked the algorithm a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Before yeah. it was like what I actually wanted, like the people I followed, I'm like, cool. I got a little up to date with everyone in the circle, I guess. Yes. Now it's just like, oh shit, street fight, death footage. <laughs> Fucking what am I on? Dude? Legit. And I, I wonder like- I, I I wonder to myself. I'm like, did he, like so? Elon definitely. There was a an algorithm shift. Obviously, it's the mm -hmm. whole this idea of like the free speech meta. And I'm like, well, does free speech just mean that everyone's a deplorable dickhead, or is it like, is this a reflection on me? Is this stuff in my feed because these are the things that I watch normally, and now they just keep serving it to me, and I'm in this fucking I, echo chamber of fucking people I, getting dude, killed and I, like I, random like, accounts like spamming only fan if only fans ads and shit i'm yeah. like what the fuck where am i right now i think with a lot of those algorithms now and the way that twitter works i think it's weird how they calculate it it's like when people over there it's like i got 19 million views on a video i'm like yo that involves people who just scrolled by right true like yeah. if we're gonna involve that metric then sure i guess we all consume content that slipped into our like thing and if it keeps feeding us that it's just like, even with, like, the OnlyFans, like, pussy and bio stuff, it's, like, I yep. think just because we, like, tap it once just to, like, block an account, it, like, all of a sudden starts to give you similar content. I, I'm surprised Agreed. a site like that gets to stay on the App Store. 
I agree too. And like I X X was the first place where I really started to utilize the the triple dot drop down menu and being like not interested. Like yeah. I just like I got to a point where I was like, I can't keep watching this shit. So I'm like pounding the not interested and it seems to help for like a couple days and then it's back to like fucking snuff films and <laughs> yeah, dude, I mean, hardcore porn. Like, like, like everyone is like, man, my X feed is so great. I'm like, you don't fucking use it. Like that means you're <laughs> lying to me. No one's feed yeah. is it. Because everyone like, well, I that, talk to, it's, yeah, it's all that's the same right. shit. And, and I think maybe, so they have like the for you and then the following, right? Like mm-hmm. the two debt. And I, maybe it, we should just keep it on following at all times, but there is an element to like, it's fucked because I know if I kept it on for you and it was like just the people I followed, I'd like that for a little bit. And then I'd get in the fucking dopamine loop where I'm like constantly pulling down, looking for that next tweet. And I'd be like, yeah. oh, let me just switch back to the for you real quick. And then I go down that rabbit hole. So there is definitely an element of it being my own fault for like, it just for a lot of us, like you just kind of get caught in this doom troll, doom scroll trap. Yeah. It, and well, it's one of the reasons why I like stopped using like fucking even Facebook and shit like that. Yeah. Facebook, I stopped using like I want to say that this is before the J Station videos and shit like that. It Get was the long J dead. Station. I've heard that name in a while. <laughs> this is before I ever like ripped on that guy. But like this is Facebook. I stopped using because it was just filled with like like it, and when I say misinformation, I mean like genuinely the most stupidest misinformation traps you'll ever fall yeah. down into. Yeah. Nowadays, you go onto Facebook, it's just like all AI images and people believing like, oh, this kid 100%. is like taking photos with polar bears. I'm like, the no. Best. Yeah, the best. And we got the political season coming up, election season. You know it's going to get heated over there. Dude, I I am so into the political like content. Just watching the side shit show, just as from like an entertainment lens, kind of. O- only from an entertainment. Yeah, I can't same, consume politics same. with like a serious mind. Like I, mm-hmm. I uh, I have too many IRL like friends that are. Uh, one thing that I love about politics is how much it's team sports now. So oh, like, oh my god, Literally, you'll have it's like Patriots I, versus Jets for me. Bro, I, I have people in real life who are just like fucking. They they support the one team because they think they're supposed to. They're supposed to like support. And I'm like, dude, I just couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> like I don't like you put up two uh, old dudes in front of me <laughs> into office. I'm like, I don't know who to vote for. They're both gonna die in like two years anyway. It's like 100. The percent dude. They're literally they're they're. <laughs> I mean, like the 80. level we could talk. We could talk a whole podcast about just the level of of dementia going on in the Oval Office, just yeah. in the race in general, and we'd have yeah. a fucking crack. But I do think I, I'm. I wonder too about like the fact that we we have this two party system where it's like sure there's like the independent and the libertarians, but like the way the system is built, those don't really exist or matter in the grand Yeah, they just consolidate into whatever the big party is anyways. 100%. So it's like when you have this two-party system, it does. I think the humans have this this innate uh, affinity for, you know, belonging in, in, and uh, acceptance and kind of being mm-hmm. on the team and that, that kind of group mob mentality. And politics is the biggest, you know, indicator of that because it's just when you look at the bigger picture, you see so many people that – are just and it, like it's like sports, like you said. It's like I, I look at a Patriots fan and how they're diehard, and doesn't matter what happens. Like they're gonna go to their grave, fucking sh- screaming, sh- like to the top of their lungs, rooting for that team, for that quarterback, yeah. no matter what the fuck they do, how bad or good they are. And politics has kind of become the same way. And I think social media has maybe exacerbated that innate need for that and kind of social media has done this weird thing where it's like it's given every single person a, a insanely amplified voice right so sure. back in the day i mean like i'm sure you know this too it's like when i want to say it was like and i was too young for this but like the obama era like i think it was a second uh just before his second term Shit so like, this was like so he was 08, I want to say, and through yeah. 16, right? Yeah. So you, yeah. I mean, you're probably, what, 10 years? How old are you? In your 20s still or are you in your 30s? Um, 30 this year. So Okay. You just yeah. turned 30, like same age as my yeah. barber. Yeah. So I've got almost a decade on you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that would make sense because you were like middle school. I was college basically around that time. Yeah. And like at the time, it's like, you know, we didn't have crazy social media stuff. Like it wasn't right. at the level that it was now. So no. everything that was relegated was primarily to like television. So, you know, parents were involved, you know, like you know, fucking college going like uh, relatives were involved. But most of their information would come from like, you know, four or five different sources, right? Like if you wanted the left leaning opinion, you put on CNN. Yep. If you wanted the right leaning opinion, you put on your Fox, right? But yep. you would never have like that super extreme end also catering to. I feel like all politics is now it's like it's either you're like this extreme leftist 
You know, like yep. I, I went on to the unsubscribe podcast, right? Great guys. Awesome dudes. Love those yep. guys. I wanted to ask you about that was my next line of question. I just because I'm fresh off of watching that episode earlier tonight yeah. because two two reasons, because I also love those guys. My last guest was Eli, as you probably know. And oh, I'm Eli actually, is fucking kick ass, dude. He's, a great he's the person. fucking man. He's the man. Yeah. The, the, that whole squad down there are, are just no. incredible gentlemen, fun to hang around with, grounded, down to earth guys. I'm actually flying when this particular episode comes out. I'll be flying home from Texas because I'm going down next week to do a range day and spend a couple days down there. Yeah, I was gonna do um, the range day, but you know, Ramadan kicks in. I was yeah, like, no, I'm like, I, yeah, we had fucking shit here. I was but. bummed. I was bummed. I missed you because I knew you were gonna be on. But uh, I was. I know. I. I don't. I forget where you were going at that point, but I wanted to ask you how that experience was, just going down there and doing the podcast and shit. I. So you know, going down to San Antonio. You know, I was. Uh, I didn't really know what to kind of expect because I knew we were all like super busy guys. Sure. So I go down over there. I think Friday. Like I. I get there Friday evening to the unsub house, mm. and uh, you know, it was, bro, their house is fucking scary as shit when you walk in. Like they it's, got these. Nobody's got, there. <laughs> nobody's there. So I want to set the stage. You walk into their house, right? And then, like, at the very end, you've got, like, two cutouts of fucking, uh, what's a, who's the, who's the guy from The Witcher? Fuck. Uh, yeah, Geralt. Yeah, Geralt. Yeah, the, Geralt the actor who plays yeah, him, Geralt. Geralt. Yeah. So the actor that plays him, he's, like, in a suit. And then, like, so you open the door, the lights are all closed, and you just see, like, corneas, right? Like, these piercing <laughs> white corneas in the distance. Bro, I thought they were in there fucking with me for a minute. I'm like, Henry what? Cavill, that's what it is. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Henry Cavill. Like, I thought, I thought they were fucking with me. And then, like, I go closer. I'm like, oh, my God, they're just cutouts. Yeah. So I'm just sitting there. I'm waiting a little bit. Eli shows up a little bit later. Yep. And, like, fucking, we go over to his place. And, bro, I, that this is what I love about Texas, dude. Like, the amount of firearms you see Eli was not fucking around that dude had like the craziest set of guns that I've seen with anybody and I'm sure if I went to Br if I had enough time to go to Brandon's like shop bro I'd, yeah. I'd see even more <laughs> but like yeah. god damn last last time last range that I went to I did I was at Brandon's shop which obviously was where he, they make guns and there's he's got his his walls of of weapons and his arsenals but getting prepared for the range day we were at Brandon's house and there I mm -hmm. have a an Instagram reel where I was on like the, the midway point of the steps that go upstairs and it kind of like overlooks, it's kind of an open concept. So it overlooks like the dining room in the living yeah. room in the, in the breezeway. And it was just every square foot of floor just cover, covered with fucking guns and rifles and shit. And I was just like, Oh my God, I guess it's just, just this is just how they do it in Texas. But it's I, uh, literally just how they do it in Texas. Like I've been to, I've, I, so most of my time, like in the U S it's like, I do a lot of work and I go down for family stuff in California yeah, uh, and it's just like you know they got guns over there too. I'm not gonna pretend they don't. Like, sure. fucking obviously, but like the level of firearms, the level of like, I would say even care with the. Like, I don't want to say they just had guns lying around. Like that gives the worst impression to somebody that's like a gun hater. No, no, they're yeah. very much like in safes. Like they're kept. Uh, it's just a volume of them. There, there's 100%. a lot. That, yeah. Like when you have a lot of guns, you 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 set the stage, you orchestrate them. Obviously, ammo's kept separately. You're packing things up to go to the range. They're yeah. responsible, obviously, with the way they operate things. It's not like there's just guns lying around with fucking kids everywhere. It's responsible adults no. that are fucking just no, no. have a good time and shoot guns. E Eli's kid was, like, fucking giving me, like, basic gun safety when I was playing with a VR oh, thing yeah. they had going on. Love it. I was like, I was like, dude, they, like, owning them and then making sure, like, the next generation knows how to use them right. Like, that's, I think that's what more people need to see, especially if they, like, talk about guns. To be fair, like, if I talk about guns with anybody, uh, being, like, a firearms owner, everyone's like, man, aren't you, like... I, I've had people tell me, it's like, what about criminals that get access? I'm like, no criminal gets access to like a fucking serialized gun that I have. That's not how it works, but correct. You know, it is, it's interesting that, you know, and I, 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 I heard you mention this on the podcast there where like, you know, there's going to be microcosms in, in kind of fringe groups on the internet, people that follow us or watch our content that just, mm -hmm. just by associating with these guys in Texas that like to shoot guns that have fun, you're like, the, you know, they've seen the things from people that try to paint them in a certain way, right? So it's like, yeah. oh, I can't believe you're going, oh, great, Leon's a fucking far-right extremist now. And I'm like, dude, 
I just these guys, these are just cool guys that like to have fun and enjoy firearms. And I've I've never been you know prouder to call some people my friends because they're just I mean, really that, stand up. That's guys. what I say to everyone. It's like yeah. as human beings, everyone has a fucking disagreement with somebody, right? Like 100%. I've I said the same thing to I think Brandon and like uh, Cody as well. I was like, listen, dude. Me and you, if we three sit down, we talk about a hot button issue, probably all going to have differing opinions. Absolutely. But like, we're not, I think we are all old enough. Like we all come from careers and something outside of YouTube where it's like, yes. we've had that social, uh, understanding where it's like, yeah, you can disagree. And it's like, whatever, move on. Cool. People will do that. <laughs> that there, I think that's important to kind of, I think that's an important piece of understanding is that. A lot of us have, you know, we were socially, I don't know what the right word for it is, like socially developed enough before having either success online or finding friends online to understand what it's like to have different um, different friend groups and being yeah. able to understand that people come from different backgrounds are going to view the world through different lenses, but you can still be in the room with them and have a conversation and have a good time in the internet. Like, and I feel like younger generation, it's, I guess it's everybody, honestly, but it's, it's created this landscape where that feels harder to obtain. Like, and it's just become this thing where everyone kind of sits behind their phone and their keyboard and makes these snap judgments on everything that they see. And it kind of creates this, you know, this, this, this system they live their life by where we've become much more shut off and unwilling to just give people a, the benefit of the doubt and mm -hmm. B just basic levels of respect. Even if that person yeah. might disagree with you in a way. And, and I think part of the problem is that like, so much of what rises to the surface online is like you said earlier, it's the extremes of every situation, whether that's yeah. political left and right, whether that's, you know, um, the, the streaming meta on kick where people are just going out and fucking punching people with body, you know, bodyguards and then calling it content. It's like all of this shit is the stuff that gets the most traction in it. And it, I don't know if it like, it fucks, it like fucks and rewires the brains of like younger generations to just think in extremes at all times. I, I think, I, that, I think that is, kind is of that content, crazy. I feel like, I feel like that kind of content, like it, it's, I hate to make this comparison. It's kind of like pornography in a way too. It's like sure. fucking once you're consuming something normal, like in the, like a normal mainstream category of it, right? Like your brain wants more and more and more. Yeah. I think it's like the IRL content, like, and when <clears> we, okay. So f before we go into, I want to say like, I'm making a video about like neon and stuff oh, because he, that's, he, uh, he genuinely makes me like hate myself for being Indian. Is he is he Indian? Is that what I he is. He's like the okay, worst type I, of Indian. He's I like I saw the, a clip of you saying he's he's never I've never seen someone that makes me hate my own like my own kind bro, more or I, whatever. I have <laughs> never like, oh, so like th this is what I always hate about like the, the Indian kind of guys. It's like yeah. on the on the internet, it's like you're either gonna find somebody that's like maybe normal in that sense, where it's like, mm -hmm. cool, I'm not I don't feel bad about whatever heritage I have because some 4chaner makes fun of me on the internet. Who gives a shit? And then you got like guys like Neon that are just so fucking complacent. Like yes. he gets pressed a little bit in public. I'm like, dude, stand up for yourself. Why are you being such a fucking bitch? <laughs> like that's the kind of stuff that I hate. Like what? I mean, I don't hate. It. I love the content these people make because it's like just extra content to laugh at. Like I remember I made a video on that Jack Doherty guy because you mentioned the bodyguard like fucking yes. letting people assault for cameras and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, it's like, this is the kind of content I feel like when we started, like when, when the, when Ice Poseidon like brought the IRL shit, cause I, yeah, I was really like early to that meta, basically I bring him to that meta. And I also like, as much as I think Ice is a bit of a fucking shithead for the scamming stuff that he was, uh, that, you yeah. know, he was alleged to be behind whatever. I remember that. Yep. I, I will give him credit for being the best fucking crack house wrangler in existence. Like he Great. ran an LA mansion, kept that shit running pretty spiffy you know he brought in all the irl crackheads all the Just scuffed people filled with the most deplorable people yeah. in the space <laughs> but he but he kept it he kept it going until you know the fbi ended up having to raid the house because yeah. I mean, you can only have them around for so long nowadays it's like it's almost like they've splintered off and like all these like i saw vitaly again on the fucking internet He's trying I am, to make a comeback. I've, he's doing the irl meta thing now same thing he's like he the, an adult jack doherty it's fucking despicable 
I think he's made a made a comeback, dude. Like, and you know what? He's like he hasn't learned a lesson. No, he's the same Vitaly we know. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like all these guys are just even more extreme than like we have dudes now who are out there committing fucking felonies on camera without even thinking twice, calling it content, bragging yeah. about it on social media. Yeah. Yeah, like that Johnny Somali guy. Like, there was a clip of Ugh, him where he was just like, bro, I man. lied to Japanese, like, judicial authorities. I'm like, bro, who admits this? Who fucking admits any of it, yeah. man? Did he end up doing a small amount of time in Japanese prison? Or he got he he did end up getting officially charged and I think he was somehow. detained, and then I think they just, like, kicked him out of the country because oh, I doubt the Japanese also. I doubt any country wants to just, like, fucking keep somebody prisoner. Uh, yeah, on their time, if you can just boot them back to the states. And I don't or know this, but I feel like Japan. I feel like Japan's not the type of country to do that shit. They're like the opposite of, like a Russia or a North Korea or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, like you get out of here, we're all very, yeah. we're just timid and we don't want to have problems. Just yeah, he, he's alive. just. He, I think it's also because he's just like American, so it's like it's just easier to get him back to his country. It's like fucking right. go home. Like yeah. we don't need you anymore. <laughs> yeah. Why well, we don't want to waste the money on your fucking yeah. uh, trial or whatever. I yeah, mean, I, I, I'm i sure they would make an example out, but they've already made so much examples out of, like, Japanese streamers. There was right. one streamer, and this is a Japanese guy, not any foreigner. Guy licked, like, soya sauce, and the dude had to, like, do public <laughs> apologies, fucking all kinds of shaming. Because he, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, he's licking fucking, here, that's a crime, too. What was you know? he licking? Yeah, licking like a bottle of soy sauce. And I think it's literally because of him that like they had to change how restaurants had to present food because <laughs> it was Christ. just embarrassing. You know, it's not something that they were cool with. But yeah, yeah they that take was like that shit meta. Seriously. You remember that meta with people on TikTok, like going into grocery stores and licking ice cream and putting it back? Isn't it so fucked up how that's the least harmless meta that they had? I mean, uh, yeah. let's not let's not forget the meta where they were kicking down front doors and shit. I'm like, I'd love to see you oh do that. Oh, my God, the UK <laughs> dudes. What was that little fucking loser's name? Uh, which UK? Uh, the dude who was like, like broke into somebody's house. And oh, like Mizzy, Mizzy. Yeah, Mizzy, he ran into you. some yeah, dude's house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> no, but I'm talking about dudes that would go to the front door and like kick it in. Like fucking... Rainbow Six style, like act the door actually gets caved in. I'm like, dude, <laughs> like if you a did door, that, they're just kicking it in as yeah. TikTok content. Yeah, like an Perfect. actual B and E, and I'm like, dude, if you did that, like fucking a little bit south, like I tweeted, I'm like, if you did that in like in the south, fuck, even in California, they'd blow your fucking brains out, dude. You'd try doing that in the states. 100, percent yeah. <laughs> I see that a lot, even on the Mizzy videos. I remember, like, you know, depend. You'd look at the comments and be like, "Try that in America, see what happens." And I'm like, "Well, not so fast. It really depends on which state you tried it." And you'd yeah, probably exactly. Be fine doing that in California or New York, but <laughs> Texas probably wouldn't want to do no. it there. Something like Alabama like, or something. Yeah, like <laughs> the hold your hold your fucking ground. I feel like hold your ground should be like a fucking UN standard law, no matter what country you live in, dude. Agree. Like fucking, if somebody that like, because I, I remember I had this fucking just. I had to, like, defend this take in the weirdest way possible. I'm like, if somebody breaks into your house, do you fucking shoot them if they pose a threat? I'm like, yeah. Absolutely. I'm like, I've got yeah. family here. I've got people that depend on me. i got yeah. people that can't defend themselves. Of yeah. course I, I would. What the fuck? I don't have... There is zero <laughs> hesitation in my resolve for that. I'm not saying that in the moment I, it would be easy or, like, I'm looking no. forward to or hoping someone does that. Yeah. I like to think that... <sighs> I pray to God. I, I, I hope never that, I hope that, that I'm never in a situation yeah. where I have to do that. But if you were to ask me, like, hey, if you know someone came into your land on your property and broke into your domicile of residence where your family lives with malintent, yeah. would you be comfortable? I, dude, I would drop that motherfucker with no questions asked. Wouldn't even care. Like, well, what if it yeah. was somebody that was like mental? I don't give a shit. Like. I, I would yeah, like I'm to not think a, I could assess uh, yeah, the threat, like, in the, but I would be I would take my gun out of my safe next to my fucking headboard, and I would be ready to fucking drop them. Yeah, like like it's no not, qualms. Like, it's it's weird because everyone wants to play like Captain Hindsight. I'm like, dude, yeah. ain't nobody has the time to play. Nobody has the time to come up like I have to be a police. I have to be as trained as a fucking police officer in that moment, dude. Yeah, nobody I, like I ask <clears throat> like at that moment you ask the questions first, and then like you you deal with all of the retribution that comes afterwards. Words, right? right like fuck even right, in canada what, where it's illegal to do it like you well, get that's what i was wondering you so you're canadian yeah or you're from you're from canada and mm -hmm. are is it like is so it, i'm just going off the the extreme 
political shit I see on X. Is it as a progressive Democrat wasteland as it's made out to be on, on X, or is it so, not that bad? The thing about like any, uh, so Canada is. <clears throat> I want to say that there's maybe parts of like, I mean, you're going to find like a hyper progressive around Toronto for sure. But where I live, like I live about, I want to say 20, 30 minutes out of the city now. Yeah. I like in the U S it's like most, once you actually get out of like, once you get into like the suburbs or like, you know, anything, I think it leans more center center. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that's normal for cities to kind of be very, the epicenter of a certain I, I wanna I wanna say the more I- ideologies, but I almost want to say the more wealth that gets accumulated, the more right it gets, you know? That's that's, a, a, that's about as sure as shit right there. I, yeah, I had 100%. a I had a fun look up, like me and uh me and Jen, we were looking at like the LA statistics, like for, for the voting, <laughs> like their voting districts. Yep. So fucking okay, city of LA is like blue as fuck, right? Then well, you got the Bel Air where people got money. Then it starts getting red. Yeah, of course. You yeah. know, where I got money. I want to keep my money and keep these yeah. fucking vagrants off my property, please. Yeah. Like you go to like Balboa, Huntington Beach, where like even the bums have a net worth of like $2 million. I'm not fucking around by saying it. The, the homeless are worth seven figs, dude. Is, bro, like, what dude, the I'm not going on. Bro, if you, bro, if you go to Huntington Beach, like there's crack houses by the beach, like beach bums. Mm, like, I dude, believe they're, it. And they're living, they're living good. Like they've mm-hmm. got money. It's just yeah. that's such an expensive part of the country. By far is the most expensive part of the country, I would say. Yes. Where like every like it's like going to San Francisco and people are like, what's the poverty line? Like I had a family friend who moved out there because he works for a fucking Roblox now. Recently? And yeah, recently. He like moved yeah. out there. I think it's been like a year now. Okay. And he was like bitching at me. It's like, bro, my taxes are so bad. I make <laughs> half of what it's listed. I'm like, dude, you live in Frisco. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, and then he's like, dude, my money goes nowhere. I'm like, you know what the poverty line for San Francisco is? I think it's like the highest in the country. Like you is have to really? be like, yeah, I think you have to be making at least six figures to cross that fucking poverty line, right? <laughs> and that's what I say. It's like you go to the you go to Tokyo, right? Like you know, fucking Tokyo has like an average salary of like a hundred thousand USD, right? Jesus. And then and then you're and then you're like, bro, look at how expensive it is to fucking live in Tokyo. <laughs> like what the fuck? Of course. Yeah, um, and I guess that's like the premium you pay, I guess, to play for the, you know, to to live in these places that have become yeah. coveted or, you know, that's why it's been so interesting to me to see, you know, the post-COVID kind of the, the exodus out of California with people relocating to Florida and Texas because a lot of the political stuff that trickles down into higher cost of living or whatever else it might be or just quality of living mm-hmm. issues that have changed people's opinion on <clears throat> where they live. But I couldn't. You know, I'm from, I've been in New England my whole life, born and raised in in Massachusetts, lived in New Hampshire for many years. And the Massachusetts, New Hampshire dichotomy is interesting because Mass is quite liberal and has has always been a blue state and their politics are are pretty liberal. And then you have New Hampshire, which is live free or die. Like that's their slogan. It's guns. It's whatever the fuck you want. You have to, you don't have to wear a helmet on your motorcycle. And, you know, it's traditionally a red state and much more rural, rural, I always have trouble saying that word, rural. Uh, yeah. And it's, I, I've seen both sides of it and it's just very, it's very interesting. I mean, I personally much prefer like the rural suburban, I, I don't know if it's because I've aged out of it. Like I spent years where I lived in the city post-college and had a really fun time, like going out to bars and doing the post-college life and all this stuff. And yeah. as you get older and have a family, I think it's natural for a lot of people in their life progression to become more conservative, more conservative as you age, start a family, accumulate maybe a higher net worth, all of these things, not in a way that's radical, but just in a way where you're trying to do what's in the best interest for yourself and your family and the loved ones around you, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a little bit, almost a bias for us too, because like I've seen different types of families these days. I've seen like fucking open couples. I've seen everything out there. So (laughs) yeah, I got it all now, baby. Yeah. For me, it's like fucking, you know, it's like me, Jen and like fucking kids in the future and that like very nuclear in the sense, right? Like how do you do the white picket fence type of family? Yes, sir. So for me, like living out here, like with more land and like a quieter, (coughs) bro, I love it when like after eight o'clock, I don't hear shit outside my fucking house, dude. Like it is quiet as fuck. Amazing. Ain't no parties. There's nothing going on. Everyone's yeah. quiet. It's relaxing, right? 
can see the stars in the sky yeah. when you look around. Yeah, it's like beautiful. okay, maybe maybe in like maybe in like my early twenties, I'm like hell yeah, boys, let's do some coke and party up all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now right. it's like no, but when I was at the unsub house, like that's when like that's when I felt like age kind of hit me a little bit with drinking, right? Because yes. we drank a fuck ton on the yeah, day we of do, like, yeah, they do that down there. I tend bro, to, okay. I tend to Im- imbibe as well. <laughs> so so to, so to give people the idea of like what the unsub podcast experience is like, they film at like I want to say one two p.m. Sure. But like, yep. you're at you're at breakfast and like fucking uh, mimosas. They, did you have the vodka man-mosa. laced mimosas? Man-mosa. Yeah, man mimosas. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, shots of vodka on the side. Yeah, like they get you the mimosa, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then like a whole fucking just like a shot of vodka, and we did like <laughs> three of those. So yeah. we were a little toasty before we all went back to the unsub house. And then the, sure. and the podcast, obviously, we're like drinking beers and drinks and everything. The white claw snap. Yeah. Oh, the, dude, the. That is the first time where I'm like, oh, these white claws fucking they sneak up on you like they oh, get yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, they taste the white claws taste a lot better when you've had three man mouses before. <laughs> yeah. And then like dinner, we're drinking more, and then like by the end of the night, dude, I am fucking gone. Like yeah. I get yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know how I functionally got the Uber when I got back to the unsub house. I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna get in. That was the only time where since college I'm like just trying to navigate my ass up to bed. Like yep. through stairs, like literally, it's like an army obstacle course. I felt like I was in like <laughs> what a Navy SEAL must train, like you know, like the whole obstacle course. Get yeah. to bed, and I wake up, and I'm like, bro, I feel like the driest throat. I'm like web MDing. I'm like, how fucked up am I? <laughs> Eli's like, bro, just <laughs> drink. You're water. googling now. You know you're fucked up on the next day when you're googling how to get better. <laughs> yeah, like dude, I'm literally I'm up the next day. I'm like sore throat after drinking, and then Eli's like, how you sleep? I'm like, I'm fucked up. He's like, yeah, drink water, dude. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I want to have something that's not <laughs> alcohol. Laden. I'm like, I wish you gave me that advice before. I'm like, oh, you're like, I look online. It's like your throat becomes dehydrated and inflamed after a night of drinking. I'm like, okay, that's great. You're bitching at me. Now tell me how to fix it immediately. <laughs> oh my God. It's funny. Cause when I, 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 one of the comp, one of the thoughts I had in my head when I was watching the episode with you down there is, is a, I don't think I've seen you in many like IRL scenarios, you know, I, and not to say that you haven't, but like as far as podcasts go, like the, the, the one you do, some ordinary podcast yeah. is remote, similar to how we're doing this right now. Mm-hmm. And B, uh, do you, uh, you don't strike me as much of a drinker. Like maybe you enjoy it, but you're not like cranking drinks at home every night or like, I'm, like for me, I'm a, I like a whiskey on the rocks. I try to, I enjoy it. But I do it in a way that's very um, regulated and um, functional, and yeah. then I save myself for a couple times a year, whether it's with my old high school buddies or I go down to see the unsub boys where I'll, I'll get a little bit more randy. But no, my for, protocol yeah. now is insane. Like for I, me, how, it's like for me, it's like purely <clears throat> parties. Like if like we were at a, and this is what I want to also talk about with like the whole social weirdness that I find with like yeah. the online influencer space. So I remember we were out at like VidCon and like this was with me, Nexpo, and like uh, Blame It on Hore and like that horror community. So yep. also we're guys who are also we had previous jobs as well too. You know we're we're guys, right? So yes. we we get a place, we get a nice place in West Hollywood because. This is like, uh, so I didn't go to VidCon before. I didn't know where the fuck Anaheim was. So I was like, ah, oh, shit, okay, let me just like Airbnb. Like, we're looking at Airbnb. Like, oh, Hollywood's a nice place. Fucking do the Google Maps. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, hey, where we were staying, fucking nice. In, in the hill yeah, area, yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. But like, <laughs> I'll give you that. There are some nice places in Hollywood. <laughs> but like, but like, so, so, so at the time, I was like, oh, we map out the Anaheim like arena where the VidCon is. I'm like, it's only half an hour, dude. And then, like, by the time I get there, like, we have to go to, like, I, we have to go to VidCon for at least, like, an hour or something just to say yeah. we did it. I'm like, fuck, of course. I forgot. This is Los Angeles, bro. It says an hour on Google Maps, but it's actually, like, two fucking hours. That, the traffic, forget it. Yeah. yeah. So yep. we get a bunch of booze. Like, people come over. Me and Jorge, we're, like, fucking, we're already gone before we get home. We're pre-gaming a little bit before the night. Yeah. So by the time we get back and people start rolling in, me and him are already plastered. Like, we're... We had, like, f- at least, like, five fucking, like, big, heavy, like, cocktails and shit, like, with yeah. shots inside and everything. But it was one of those nights where, like, people came over, they just, like, had beers, and then, like, were watching, like, epic rap battles of history and, like, <laughs> dreams music. Late night, old school YouTube videos? Yeah. Bro, I wake up at, like, two in the morning, because I go to bed earlier, I'm like, right, I'm fucking gone. I wake up, everyone's gone, place isn't trashed, I'm like, thank God. I open Solid. up the TV up, I'm like, who the fuck is... You guys are here and you just watch a lot of it is like again it's just people that are really young and they finally go out and like actually have like you know 
It's like their first. It's their first experience yeah. in like a like a socially extroverted scenario with yeah. that. It, what, what year was this? Was this recently that you did this? Uh, this was um, this was during COVID. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, this boy, was let's go. this was like I want to say you were one of those cover boy. <laughs> uh, this, this was during 2021 when uh, I totally did not have a party in the state of California. <laughs> yeah, as long as, as long as you weren't on Instagram reels like six feet to stop the spread and then closing the app and going and getting fucked up with 300 people. Like that's I didn't, like for me at the time I was always like yeah to do what the fuck you want man no one knows what's going on just don't be one of those guys that goes on fucking line to to social signal and then turns the camera off and gets caught getting fucking fucked up at like yeah. a rave underground with three hundred people like that night that, I that, mean that's for, my least yeah, favorite type of person for, for me it was like fucking I'm like all I do is like I abide by whatever the I guess medical like opinion is like sure I'll right. I'll be my whole thing is like I go out there I'm like I'm definitely fucking catching COVID I probably am going to it's gonna yeah, yeah. fucking happen you just resign yourself you know? to it at some point like, you know, it's like, gonna it's happen so, yeah it's gonna happen I'm like I'm gonna be meeting people so all I really told myself I'm like I'm just not gonna see my mom and dad for like a, two weeks or something yeah. just I'm not gonna go over to their house and like fucking say hi in case I have it and I don't have a symptom after that I'm like cool I'm in and out. The only the only thing that sucked about that covid shit was traveling bro like to get a fucking yeah, oh PCR test everything. Yeah, Boy. yeah, just to fly you needed to have the test within like 48 hours. What that that was a uh, man, what a wild time. I mean yeah. even with like the vaccine stuff it's like, you know, I I never made like the whole political side. I only just got it because I'm like dude, I travel a lot for work and I'm like shit. Same. Like yep. I had a buddy of mine who's like, dude, just get like a fake Vax passport. I'm like, I don't want to get fucking blacklisted from U.S. entry. Dude, <laughs> dude there was a decent yeah. black market going for those, though, for a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're 100%. And, and, and honestly, it's like, I don't think I don't think the governments would have even been able to tell. How because, would they have, dude? Like when I when I got mine, like they give you a little like three by five card and then. Yeah, like the, I remember I went to a concert one year, like in 21, and they're like, passport, fuck, like vaccine cards required. I was like, oh my God, this is the worst. But like, no, the people at the door, you're paying some, like, you're asking some security guard making. I don't know, like 45K a year to try and make sure everybody, like the, the 15,000 people coming in there have like legitimate pet. Nobody gave a fuck. They're all just like flashing. Yeah. Okay, yep, get in, get in, get in, get I, like. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like with false. passports, right? Like if you look at it, if you think about like how a passport works, the biggest misconception is like every country just has like, I guess, directory access, which they mm. don't. All yeah. the passport does, they just scan it. And it's like, oh, that's your name. That's your fucking photo. Cool. Go through. But like, it's not as if like there's this crazy database where the government's able to pull information out of and be like, that person's definitely fucking faking their like card or whatever. And I don't think most of them even cared, right? Like, yes, it was really a time when like it was fun to see the amount of people get overly performative about it. Like, I think it was that one dude, Dr. Huge. Mike, Dr. Fucking Mike. I think Dr. it was just Mike. like. One of the biggest YouTube docs disseminating yeah. all the world's most important information. He was like sitting there. He's like, fucking, you guys should watch the spread. And wasn't he the same dude that was like partying? Oh, he, oh, that's right. He got fucking dragged because he was making the videos about it and then like went to vacation in Mexico or like a Yeah, Aruba he was on like a and yacht fucking, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got fucking called out. Like, I don't know if he, if there was like some third party like tablet, like pictures, like a paparazzi pic, or if like he was dumb enough to be putting it on his Instagram or something. But. I think it was like a paparazzi picture, which is like it's yeah. also doubly fucking stupid, right? Like, yes, you're a public figure. You know that somebody's probably gonna have like a photo of you or something, especially if you're on like a goddamn yacht or something, bro. They're gonna post that and you're that done. That was man. That was one of the most interesting times where there there was a there was a microcosm on Twitter, and this is. <sighs> This has, like, been true beyond COVID just in general. There was this group of, like, I don't even know what I'd call them. Like, your typical kind of, like, Taylor Swift profile picture, like, dream fan, Minecrafter, like, that, like, they all get together and they spend all of their time trying to figure out how they can... Um, Try Destroy. and get people in trouble that have an audience. And it's like, at the time, the easiest way to do it was like, oh, my God, this person had the audacity to be around other people 
when you're not allowed to be around other people. And it would like, that was the thing. That was like the thing they latched onto for however many months. It was like, oh, look at this person. They went, I saw them. They went to a fucking birthday party and this like three people there didn't have masks on. And it was like, what a weirdly, what a weird time that was. The, it was like the, see. it was like the snitch fucking parade. Like, it, oh my God. Dur- it was like, dude, during COVID, I must have, I, I was hanging out with the guys. Like I the had The snitch Olympics, bro. It was the snitch Olympics. It really was. I, I had enough, like I had boys over all the time in my house yeah and that was because like everyone was distant like it was a period of time where like me and the family weren't seeing each other because like they had they were older i wasn't so it was like all right cool we'll like maintain our distance and everything and i think by the time there was like i did the same with my folks as well who were older yeah yeah by the time there was like a third covid variant where it was like oh this isn't as bad as the initial wave that hit Mm -hmm. i was like all right cool we'll fucking start seeing each other again cool i thought the same i'm like how long are they gonna keep doing this variant thing because i'm starting to get a little skeptical here yeah (laughs) like even with the even with the vaccine and shot stuff it's like i stopped taking it as soon as they said it wasn't mandatory anymore once the passports got thrown out once the contact tracing was gone, I was like, fuck it. I don't give a shit about updating this anymore. Yeah, like, I, I did it. I did a one and done myself. And then just because early on, I was very like, uh, whatever. I, you grabbed I was, the syringe like, yourself and just gave it? Yeah, I was ve- I'm very apolitical. And just like, for me, it's always been like, what makes the most sense? And yeah. I don't know. I Maybe in hindsight, I, I, I've, I've maybe become a little more... I don't even want to say, I hate to say I've become radicalized because that's not, that's the wrong word, but I've, I've become much more skeptical. That whole, the last four years has really, uh, has really made me more skeptical on every single, uh, organization, whether it's institutional government funded or private, uh, you know, private institution that is supposed to have our best interests at heart, uh, Bro, when I don't trust really the government pro- at all, profit dude. is the only thing that matters. I, 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 I'll say it right now. I don't trust the government at all, dude. I, I, if you no, s- not at all. I don't trust any institute. I don't trust any fucking government agency, period. None. Because they're all they're all just bought and paid for by private equity and like companies that like, mm-hmm. I, and I'm just spitballing here, but it feels to me like the government, they're kind of like, they're just so technologically, they're just so behind the eight ball in every aspect of the, the way the world works, they're just kind of like the front for the real fucking money, which is like, you know, these companies that own the world, whether it's big farm or big food and like all these multi-trillion dollar, the fucking, you know, uh, the, the, these companies that essentially, uh, you know, payment pay for war and fund yeah. the wars to happen overseas. Like it feels like it's just, the government is mostly just this kind of like charade that is, used to kind of dangle in front of people to placate them while the big boys are just playing chess in the shadows. And that sounds very I, like Andrew Tatey matrixy, but like I've become a little bit like me. That kind I, of feels I don't, real. I don't disagree with that statement. Yeah. I really do think that they're, I, you know, it's, it's one of the things I remember I was, uh, we had this thing with, I, I talked about this with, I think coffee. Uh, it was yeah. at the time when we were really looking into like crypto scams, which by the way, I'm so glad Influencer crypto scams are coming back. I've seen some oh, dude. Of these, like, new posts. Let's go content for days. <laughs> so fucking ready for that, dude. I'm like, I'm like eagle eyed watching it. But yeah, that, there was a time where like fucking Nancy Pelosi gets caught insider trading, and it's like yes. if me and you did that shit, we'd be in a jail cell. You know, 100%. they would make an example of us. She does it. She still has not. her job, dude. She has her government job for breaking a government rule. Yep. <laughs> and like the I, I the system is it, it's designed in a way to screw us over. Like in a video, I always say, like, man, get the FBI involved, but it's like that's literally all I can just say. I'm like, oh, I got the feds involved, but do I have any faith in the FBI doing sometimes they do things right. They sometimes like the malware stuff that I make, sometimes they do they do their job. Yep. In most cases, when it comes to finances, I honestly cannot say that they have done anything right for... No, and I would say especially when it comes to, like, sure, the mal the malware thing, when there's... When, when the only stakes are outside actors uh, acting yep. malevolently, the FBI will do their job. If it's people from inside their own camp, which is where some of the worst corruption comes from, not just the FBI, but just at the government level, the Pelosi's of the world, the insider yeah. trading, I mean, all of the people in these kind of bureaucratic positions in our government that you pat my back, I'll pat yours. It's all just a big circle jerk. That's when things are like, well, it's just we turn the other way. Because it's all just people protecting their own, it feels like. 
Yeah, I mean, it's like a state agency designed to keep the state and whatever power it has in, 100%. in check. That's pretty much. And it's like same with like any financial regulation group, too. It's like with like crypto and everything. The SEC, what a fucking joke they are. Dude, the SEC, I, I think for any crypto scam that we talk about now or any like actual financial scam, I don't even like, me- I, I like mentioning the IRS at this point a little bit more because I feel like they might have more fangs in them. Yeah. The SEC is like the worst institution we've ever had to see because you could, it's funny, you t- we've talked to people inside the SEC, like actual agents and stuff, mm-hmm. and you send them information, they're like, they do the Elon thing where it's like interesting, right? Yeah. Never a fucking follow up on anything. Ever. It's like, bro, we, how fucked up is it? We literally, I have packaged you something that could make your career, right? Like, yes, this is an actual, like, these are sets of influencers that have committed multiple millions of dollars of recognizable fraud. That yeah. is a career for any government agent. That's a fucking, that's a big knife to stick into an emerging market where you can actually start laying regulations, right? You yep. still don't take it. They're too busy and they're too, they're, I feel like they're more, if fucking Pat, uh, who is it? The fucking Evan, uh, Chris, the guy with the private jet. He's like the Christian pastor. Fuck. If point is, if he the started Christian, ba- that's an SEC guy or something. No, no, no. He's like this Christian pastor, the one with the oh Peter eyes. Popoff or no, uh, 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 dude. I've made multiple videos on him. He's Peter Popoff. Uh, he's like the me. he's like the guy who he bought his private jet from like uh, Tyler from, Perry uh, and everything. Tyler Perry, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's yeah, he's like a he's an. I can't remember his name right now, but like if somebody of me. that, if somebody of that caliber started doing it, the SEC or any government agency would go fast. There was one crypto scam that happened so recently. I covered it where like a fucking pastor came out and said, God told him the liquidity would come. In I court. made a video on that on my channel. Bro. Yeah, I did a 30 minute video. I looked at the fucking, I looked at the, so, I looked at the, the, the court filing and everything. Yeah. The, yeah. The court files. It was crazy. It was, yeah. it was he comes out and it's like, God told me. And it's like, they literally like the government does such a good job hunting this guy. They like listed out the exact. You could, I bet you could probably fucking control F the VIN number on the Range Rover they mentioned, right? Yes. The fucking, the, the, who they bought the wood for their kitchen renovation from. Yes. But it was somebody that just did it in like this non influencer circle, this area they didn't understand. Or it was somebody that had like a church and like the government has a hard on for anybody that's like taking advantage of like religious tax, uh, exemptions well, unless yeah, it's well, Scientology. Yeah. If, there's, if they're not making money yeah. out of it yeah of course well unless it's like fucking scientology then you have like your own special division which like <laughs> yeah, that's true then it's totally fine for some reason i, dude, kenneth, I love that story with scientology apparently kenneth like, copeland by the way is the guy that's his name yeah kenneth kenneth yeah. if kenneth copeland ran a crypto yeah. he would be instantly taken down the next fucking day 100 yeah scientology though that that is my favorite irs exemption bro like i don't know if the story is truly valid but apparently like the story well, for I, them, I do want to know because i've watched a few documentaries on it and it seems so outlandish it, not just like the religion and the cult itself but why does the like irs let that happen as some sort of tax exemption well, well so the story and again like people you feel free to google this story because it's outlandish apparently how they got it mm. so the scientology they have like the craziest like human network of like people that like gather intelligence, like the okay. whole allegation is like these celebrities stay in because they got so many. The they're celebrities, just blackmailed. Their tits are blackmailed off. Yeah, basically. Exactly. Their personal information through, that they gain through these auditing sessions are like blackmail material. So they're just stuck in the cult for their life, allegedly. So one of the things was was apparently like one of the Scientologists or like some of the people from their organization went to like a party with a bunch of IRS people and got like actual dirt on the IRS, like fucking blackmail material. Wow. And they are the only agency technically that I know of that has the fucking IRS in a vice grip. Jesus, is this kind of like like the, the same type same type of beat as like the Epstein shit, where he's like a Mossad agent that basically is hired by whatever government to just collect dirt on all of the world's most powerful people? Yeah, until until like he until he fucks with the wrong people, and then it's like you're dead. Once you and fuck with the Clintons, yeah. and then you're gone. <laughs> exactly. No, but but it's such a weird like cult to go down into because yeah, I don't yeah. know if you I don't know if anybody's ever like driven by Scientologists like camps. So I, there used to be one in outside of Boston in the city in the suburb I used to live in. It was just like a little tiny building, but I know that there's that was probably a, a one-off. But I know obviously 
What, there's there's the headquarters in California, or is that like yeah? So like the Midwest? the headquarters like it's literally L. Ron Hubbard Way. Like he the the street is named after they like L. Ron. own the, the entire like they, small part of they the town, own basically. yeah they own that whole like so section. much money, dude. They have, like, they have so much real estate too. All their money well, is in real estate. I well, like. I remember me and Jen. We went to this. This is the creepiest fucking moment of our entire life. Like this is a moment where I genuinely felt like I was gonna have the black hood put over my head and like fucking killed. <laughs> So I'm going to set the stage for you. So they got the Celebrity Center, and then they yeah. got, like, the actual Scientology headquarters. We didn't go to the sci- – we went to the Scientology headquarters, walked around it for a bit, and then there was, like, very – like, I, I went up there for five minutes out of the car. There were people on bikes just on the side of – like, actual people watching you, you know? Like, they it's were crazy. there. It's creepy. But so the Celebrity Center is even fucking wilder. So they had this open house, and I'm like, yo, let's go in and see what Scientology is about. So we go to the driveway. Was this like a recru- uh, recruitment event for them? I don't know if it was recruitment. It was just like come in and learn, right? Like okay. nobody was there. So it was a PR event then. <laughs> yeah. So well, yeah. it's it's super creepy because like you go to the you go to their place, you get your car, you go to the front area, the security guy comes out, and then like he tells you to go park in this one area and just wait there. So he's on the radio. Some lady comes out. She's like the actual representative, and like. By the way, this whole thing takes like 10 minutes for him to radio and get this lady out. Okay. And the walk is like a minute. So when we're walking into the Scientology building, there's like people who are having a coffee at a cafe that's visibly closed. Like these people are out there having coffee and donuts and the cafe behind them. Like she's telling us that that's our cafe. Not a fucking cashier. Nobody's there. They're, these people like are just Truman out. Show. Yeah, like <laughs> li- they staged the fucking outside. I feel yeah, I have to imagine. Yeah. So you go in, you sit down, they put this tape on, and like Jen's like telling me, it's like that one guy has been like eyeing you for a minute. So I did the fucking mistake of putting my real name on the on the registration. She put like sure. a fake name in. So she was like, he's probably Googling your name. And then he found out that you're doing like YouTube and everything. Cause he kept yeah, on millions eyeing millions of subscribers and does all these investigative Yeah, videos. He like oh, kept boy. eyeing me out. And then like, she's like, we got to get the fuck out of here. So we're trying to leave and they're holding us back. And we just, I just keep, I I'm talking, I'm like moving my ass to the front door. And then eventually like they, they basically have to let us leave. Right. Like, it's not like they can that was the only time I felt like I was going to get fucking black bagged and like never seen again. If I just for showing up and you can feel like the, you can feel a hole burn in the back of your head. From oh, the dude, eyeballs it was the most, on it you. was the most tense fucking experience. Like the whole inside it's, you know, when people like when you, when you tell them what a cult is like, like right. how people talk when they're in a cult, that dead eye fish stare into your eye. Like yes. that's what it felt like. That's the cult. Everyone in there. Yeah. And it's weird. Cause the guy that I was talking to, he's like, Oh, yeah, I'm from Canada, too. Like, he's just bullshitting information out to me. I'm like, bro, you are not from Canada. You have never left the state of California. What the (laughs) fuck are you talking about? Like, he's coming. He, like, mixes a province and, like, a city. Because I I do this thing where I'm like, I'm like, oh, so you were in, like, Calgary, like, Saskatchewan. And he's like, yeah, I'm like, because I, 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 like, I mentioned, like, a, a city in a totally different province. And once he said yes to that, I'm like... Bro, what the fuck? This yeah, guy's know it all what I'm I'm like, about, he doesn't dude. know. Yeah. He's just trying yeah. to bullshit me. I'm like, I'm getting the fuck. It's the weirdest situation. And like, you know, it's, even right now when uh, when you look into Scientology, and one of the reasons this is the only group that I would never make a video on is because like they are mm. just, they are legitimately like once you're on their shit list, they just fucking track you till the end of time, bro. It's I mean, they hideous. have the resources and the connections, man. I mean, you look at. Who who's that? The broad from Everybody Loves Raymond that like did the the special where she was in Scientology and then came out and did a documentary about how insane and abusive and like how, after she tried to leave and started talking how how the level of harassment she got from them. Um, yeah, I forget was, it, the wife from Everybody Loves Raymond. Uh, I don't remember her real name. Patricia She's an Heaton. Actress. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Patricia. Um, I yeah. find that so interesting. And the, the the whole Tom Cruise thing too, like how he's he he was I don't know how involved he still is in the, that organization, but he was their t- number two guy. Like outside of I forget the name of the guy mm-hmm. that was, you know, Elrond's been dead for a while and then there was the one guy who was kind of the leader and they would every time they did a big a big event, they would have Tom come out and he'd be wearing like a medal. Are you talking about like David Miscavige? Miscavige, yeah, Miscavige, yeah. You know he's still missing, right? Like he's he's they've tried to summon him for a year. He's still missing for a year now, I think. What the fuck? He's been dodging all the summons imaginable. 
So that is, dude okay, is so is he finally facing legal repercussions? Is that why? I like, you know, I don't he's know on the lam? I feel like maybe, but like, you know, dodging a summons, like, you probably shouldn't fucking be doing that. Uh, yeah, he <laughs> probably know? got something to hide, maybe. Yeah, like, he's out of it. Like, he's just, he's hiding behind, like, a whole legal team of lawyers. He's been missing since, like, fucking, I posted, like, an image, and it has to be, like, over a about a year now at this point. I'm, like, yeah. in front of the Scientology building pointing. I'm, like, I'm here to find David. I thought he would have been found in, like, a fucking month or something. No, he's still, like, actually actively missing. Like, they just keep serving him summons. And he's nowhere to be fucking found, dude. So he's got no intention, probably, of ever showing up. I feel no. like. No, yeah. I don't think so. The, he's the, probably living fine. They probably have so many places to put people like uh, on the lam for a while. Uh, you know, I just bro, they from own, what I understand, they own, what, the amount of real places Florida? they own. And, they own like an entire city in Florida, bro. That, that's fucking, what I mean. Like you can, yeah. they probably have little like micro cities where they kind of run the whole show. They're like their own little little, little governments. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like they just. I don't know how did they rise to that level of power. I guess, like you said earlier, the the theory of you know them essentially having dirt on some of the most powerful people. On yeah, the planet, they spread themselves kind of, that you know, way, and then like there's yeah. people that just believe it too, right? Like that's you know, the even sa- that's the sadder yeah. explanation, honestly. Yeah, like you got. But people I mean, in cults a cult have been around. It. Cults have been around forever, so it's yeah. not like it's anything new. And look, I can't like I can't shit on a Scientologist. Like as somebody that's also I guess religious as well too. Like I guess their counterpoint is how the fuck can we believe your version of religion versus ours, right? And I'm like, I can sit here and say that your guy made a sci-fi book, but, like, Mm -hmm. whatever. I'm not going to, like, if you're not shitting on me, whatever, I'm not going to fucking throw the salvo on you. But I will say, like... Look but he named him, he named their god Lord Zenu. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, you can sit like we all like. I, I don't get me wrong. I think it's all a fucking crackpot thing. But course, people yeah. that believe it, it's like you know, for them, it's. I feel like a lot of it is just this is this is what their like vehicle of hope is. You know, like some, yeah. somebody's everyone's got to have something that keeps them going. Well, for what it's worth, yeah. that is, I think, what religion is for a lot of people. Yeah, is, I mean, and and not to say, that's not. A negative. I think that I think that can enrich a lot of people's lives is having something they can believe yeah. or hope or cling on to that gives them hope. Um, what, whatever that looks like, whether whether that's religion, or oftentimes that it is. I actually, you know, I just did. I just sat in the seat last night and recorded a video for my main channel that's not out yet. And it was, I don't often talk about religion on the main channel, but I sometimes bring it up because I was raised uh, in a very Christian Protestant household. My family still to this day, Mm -hmm. um, very religious and devout Christians in, in, in the best way. Like they're the best people on the planet. They're not radical. They're very loving. Like I have nothing but praise for my family and the, the way I was raised. I think it, the, the moral foundations that my life were built on, I, I'm I'm happy that I have them. Yeah. But as I've grown older, I've separated a lot of the theology of Christianity, uh, Christianity, excuse me, and just held on to some of the moral teachings that I've internalized and become m- more agnostic. I'd say, from the perspective of like you know, I I I. I don't necessarily believe all these things that I was taught to believe growing up, but I will never, I can't shit on somebody else for believing in a God or something that they feel enriches their life. Yeah. Um, I can't, you know, just like, that's my, that's the problem I have with atheists essentially. We're like, Oh, well, no, there's definitely no God. I'm like, well, that's, that's as outlandish as someone saying they're dead. You know, to me, it's like, well, you can't prove that there isn't the same way I don't think that someone can prove that there is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I'm just yeah, like, in a place where it's I, a faith-based I, system, obviously. Yeah, like, like I sit over there and I'm just like, listen, man, I mean, what? I as long as you don't, like, people let people be, you know? Yeah. As long, I always kept it kind of to myself. I hate the whole idea of organizing this kind of crap because I always find that at least to, like, some of the worst... Yeah, that leads to the fucking Kenneth Copeland's, right? Like fucking. Well, that that's the <laughs> other problem is like the the fr- like there. I have this conflict internally because some of the people that I love most in my life have such a strong personal relationship with God or Jesus or whatever that might be. But on the flip side of that, I make videos on these dudes who look like the devil incarnate. Like, I I I have trouble believing that Kenneth Copeland really believes the shit that comes out of his mouth. Like you're if, to me, you're just a an evil being that is fleecing uh, vulnerable people 
and that's what you've done your whole life. And you've somehow convinced yourself that you're serving God. So there's this huge disparity that of you know these people that falls under the same umbrella of religion. And so that's been kind of a, a, a moral battle for me as I've grown into an adult and have family members and like, it's just, uh, I, it, so it's something I grapple with and it's, you know, yeah, and I mean, certainly it, it's, watching the Kenneth Culpins and stuff has, yeah. has informed, has made me feel a certain way about those types. But then the flip side of that is like, man, my parents and some of the people in my family and some of the people I've met growing up in these, uh, under the Christianity umbrella are some of the best people on the planet, not just because they're Christian, but because of who they are as a person, their character yeah. and how they live their life. So that's something I've wrestled yeah. with. And I don't know. It's, and it's, tough it's just, to, a, it's just a shame. They have to have like douchebags like that who yeah. give so much ammunition for like the worst, like the, the biggest critics, sorry to say like the, that, that are against them. So sure. yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, I think it, it goes to like so many pieces, even on social media too, like to make it like a big, I guess, diversion of topic it's like even i've been covering one one of the videos that i'm so excited but dreaded to make is this one video about this keffels character i don't oh, know my if you goodness. heard about her yeah yeah i know Bro, so like i've been i've been doing the the so for the last i would say month it's been like you know that part of breaking bad when like he figures out fucking waltz the bad guy and, <laughs> yeah, yeah and he's in the garage oh. like putting everything together that's my whole fucking like <laughs> <laughs> one room of my like fucking house. I'm like putting together all of the bullshit. You get like, like the all fucking the... all the pictures yeah. and the red yarn, the red <laughs> yeah. yarn going Dude, around. <laughs> it's in my garage and like sometimes like, like Alan Wake too yeah. right now. <laughs> Literally like I, like sometimes I think it's like man, my garage door, I'm going to leave it open and she's going to walk in front of me like, "Oh god. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> it's going to we're going we're gonna to have that confrontation." But so I was like covering her and it's like, "Bro, I have never found a fucking trans activist that is the worst activist in existence, bro." Yeah. Like, bro, I, I have, so throughout this entire situation, right? Like I've always maintained, I'm like, I'm not here for like whatever bullshit culture war that you, I'm here to cover somebody I think is an objective scammer. Okay. Yes. hundred thousand dollars that have been raised. Nothing has been done. Yep. You take the money and you move out to like different parts. I'm sitting yep. there. I'm, I'm looking at clips now. Now we're at where it's like, she's literally admitting. It's like, I didn't even have to move to another part of the world to escape online harassment. And I'm like. Dumbass, I could have told you that when you were moving in the first place. Online harassment follows you out throughout the entire world. But point is, she made this <laughs> Hence whole... the word online. <laughs> yeah, so she makes this like whole thing covering this whole like Drop Kiwi Farms campaign. Now, for anybody that doesn't know, Kiwi Farms is a uh, gossip website where it's literally like old school internet. Anything fucking goes, okay? You can yep. go to that website right now. You can put in Mudahar, and I'm pretty sure you're going to find like street shitter or something tossed in everyone gets fucking destroyed on that website right yes so my rule is with anything on the internet and this is obviously different for like kevils is like much more uh targeted than i would be so everyone's mileage varies with this advice but it's always anytime somebody is treating you like that don't engage like stay yep. far fucking away from it right I that is agree. the best advice to ever give but yep. she obviously didn't she kind of egged them on and it became like this multi-month long war between her and this website where all that effectively happened was the website was taken down for a couple i want to say months and then the site owner null ended up actually getting a whole bunch of extra ddos protections the site is wow. very much up and running it's more protected than it ever has been all that's happened, it was like a stress test basically and now it, it's back and stronger than ever oh dude 100 it's like it's a much bigger site now did it come down from ddos attacks or was it like a cloud or was it like a hosting so, problem so what happened was cloudflare the actual uh, cloudflare, cloudflare yeah. was like they dropped them that's okay, what caused that's what all was. the ddos attacks to go in and Cloudflare is now on record saying that was the fucking worst decision they made because... Because they must have got shit on for that, I bet. Well, because the whole thing was, we're supposed to be neutral, right? And I remember right. Keffels was like making me out to be like an anti-trans person because I only said, I'm like, I don't think we should be DDoSing anybody. We shouldn't stoop down to somebody's level. I think, right. I think of, this might sound extreme to people watching. I think DDoSing, I treat it like a full federal crime. I don't. I think it's cyber terrorism. I wouldn't engage in it. Uh, if somebody is DDoSing me, and I have been DDoS, I wouldn't do the same thing back as like some guerrilla warfare. And I also wouldn't threaten 
the fabric of these companies holding up the internet like Cloudflare because I think it's a net negative, you know? Once you take away the neutrality aspect, once, once you start doing that, who's to say, you know, your ideologies won't be targeted or vice versa, right? Right. And that's where I am very much like against it. That's the only thing that she tried to frame it as like, I'm anti-trans. I'm like, that is crazy. I, I am very much against going. Again, no, you, but, you know. you're for just letting ideas exist, right? Like that it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of comes DDO that, that version of DDOSing comes down to like censorship essentially. Right. Yeah. You're like My, like Kiwi yeah. farms might be a difficult place to, to basically yeah. attract some of the worst people on the planet that are just their entire existence is to troll yeah. people and whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. I don't know a lot about it, but it, it should probably be allowed to exist if we're actually advocates of a, you know, fair or neutral internet where, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I mean, mean there, that's there, a whole there's, rabbit a, hole. there's a lot of bad websites, right? Like, I mean, of shit, course, if you want to, yeah. if you want to get into the history of bad websites, I mean, there's sites like Stormfront that are still, like, this is like existing. your specialty, dude. This is why you're like a dark web fucking like, sleuth. No, but I it, love dude, it. but yeah. it's like, it's like, you know, it's a shit like Stormfront existed, right? Stormfront yeah. is like the most infamous long running neo-Nazi forum, right? Yeah. Now, obviously, do I enjoy a site like that existing? No. Does no. it have a right to exist? Sure. Would I target the actual fabrics of the internet, keeping it up? No. When you start going after these hosting agencies, Yep. That's and Cloudflare. They ended up. It's like that is the worst decision. We made our neutrality look bad. They were selling themselves on the yes. idea of fucking neutrality. Now, obviously, there's a the only thing that I think the internet should remove is like obviously illegal material, right? Like you're talking about your child porn. You're like dead. Uh, yeah, this, yeah. You know, because those it, aren't just those aren't just ideas anymore. That's not just conversation. That is yeah. actual. Well, evil. that's a commodity. That's an evil that's, commodity a, that's being exactly. traded. Yeah. So it's not like a forum where you're talking and saying bad things that people don't like, but yeah. that type of thing. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So that's like my cutoff, right? Like that's where I pretty much stand with. So yeah. looking into her now, looking at her, like the failed campaign, the hundred thousand dollars that didn't go anywhere. We're out sending like fucking, we're out getting all the information we can. And it's just one of those things where it's like, I, I, I I don't want to say that I get like a kick out of kicking people down in that way because I don't feel like I'm kicking people down unnecessarily, but it's like even covering dudes like the completionist or something, right? Like I, I genuinely do like to make something that would be informative to teach people not to fall down into these, you know, rabbit holes to begin with, right? Like don't just yeah. give your money off to some random person. Like I remember when we looked at the completionist shit, dude, this is a story that I still don't even fucking like, I still can't believe happened, right? Like, the tip-off that we got, Carl brought it over to me. He's yeah. like, bro, we I'm looking at 10 years of tax filings with not a single donation. I'm like... Yeah, that was, for anyone listening, that was a huge thing that you were part of the investigation recently where a, a big kind of streamer slash personality that was part of the, the speedrunning community had an audience had been essentially saying... Raising money for charity for X amount of years. Well, this, and- this was the this was a this was a wholesome like gaming streamer that everyone was like friendly with. Everyone was like, "This yep. guy can't do anything wrong." He right. ran an event called Indie Land <clears throat> for fucking so many X years. He had a charity called the Open Hand Foundation, and the problem is the charity and him were one and the same. So okay. that alone isn't bad. Like I don't want to say that's a bad thing. You can I can run a charitable foundation myself. The problem in there lies is. Throughout the years, he was like, we're giving money, we're working with these people, and not a single dime went out of that fucking charity account to any of these companies, uh, and nor was he able to provide any email chain that, like, For any intention working. at all or something? Yeah, it, like, not an email chain at all, so nothing was provided. It was just one of those weird stories where I'm like, I'm like, bro, how does the fucking IRS not look at this? Like, how is it that this is a published document? Is he, and I'm is he writing at it? all of that off too? Like, well, well, like the thing is, some of the money, like uh, where. So what's funny is like he accused us of making accusations we never said. Like I believe I imbe- yeah, embezzlement I was one. On Twitter. So embezzlement was one, and like Twitter is such a crazy place because it is. He made a response without providing any receipt, no nothing. And yep. that day, I must have gotten so many things. Like, you got fucking owned. And, like, I'm sitting there. I'm like, shit, maybe I did get fucking owned. So I watched the video, like, that night, the response video. And I think Carl was, like, he was asleep because Australian times. And, like, 
Coffee was like in the middle of me watching. It's like, bro, you got to take your victory laps. This is the worst response. <laughs> and like, I watched the response. I'm like, dude, didn't have a single receipt. <laughs> Not a fucking every, receipt. Everyone on Twitter's like, bro, take that, move hard. Dude, you fucking got every, dude, there were so many like actual industry people, mutuals, like people who I thought were intelligent, right? Yeah. Who were like, oh, I can't believe these drama guys got on. I'm like, Tolita, hold on a minute. In the call we had with him, he's like, I love the work you did on Logan Paul. So I'm like, so when I'm shitting on Logan, it's not drama. It's a financial but investigation. It's, it's the guy everybody loves all of a sudden. The, the then it's TMZ. to ruin somebody, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. then I'm sitting there, I'm like, actually, if you think about it, there's a lot more evidence on you than there was on Logan. <laughs> like, yeah. believe it or not, Logan is, Logan's thing is somehow better kept than your operation. <laughs> like, there's a, a lot more spot. to fry a, you on. A, tough spot to be in when Logan's doing it better than you are. Well, like now, now it's like <laughs> from it's an a, ethics standpoint, well, it, it's so it's <laughs> fucked up in a sense too. Now where it's like, every time I have a call with somebody like, like I, I legit would like be like, Hey, can we have a, can we, can we call on discord? Cause I just want to get like a general, like I want to talk about a piece of content or like just confer with like a YouTube colleague. And yeah. the first question is like, uh, I didn't scam anyone. Did I? I'm like, no, I'm not calling you for that. Trust me. It's not going to happen. <laughs> like I'm just, because, dude, that call was so weird. The, the reason he took it, like, fucking, I want to say, I messaged him around, like, 3 p.m. I'm like, hey, can we have a call about this charity foundation, right? Like, the whole thing. It wasn't an ambush. It was like, yeah. I need to call you about this. And he's like, yeah, give me a few hours. And I'm like, Carl, he's going to talk to a lawyer, and he's already out. Let's just fucking keep our – let's let's just not even have this in the back pocket. It's it's a, It's already out the window. Then he's like, I'm ready for a call. And I'm like – I'm like, are you sure? I'm not, I'll take I'll take the fucking gift horse coming over here. Yeah. Dude, the amount of confessions he made in that call, fucking wow. insanity, dude. I can't. So I, where does it stand now? Because I, I remember seeing it like when it was popping on Twitter. And like, I know sometimes these things, as people on the internet do, they get, these things take time. When there's legality involved and there's investigations and trying to figure these things out, people get bored and they move on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. What? How did this end up? Where does it stand now? Like, um, is, is, I guess is there like an admission of guilt, or is there like what's kind of the overall? Well, the overall thing is, it's like the guy pretty much made his statements. Um, he admitted to us on a call. It's like you know, this doesn't look fucking cool. Nothing is right. There was a lot of inconsistency. So. There was a threat of a lawsuit, and honestly, I don't think it's ever going to go anywhere. And Against part of me you guys like, for talking about it? Oh, yeah. You threatened, like, he, like, said that there, we're looking into possible legal action. So mm-hmm. I'm like, it's always, like, usually for, puff like, your fucking slander or up. something, but, you, but you're... Or defamation and slander, yeah. Defamation and slander, yeah. but you're coming with receipts, and he's coming with... No receipts. Yeah, exactly. So we're, like... Mm-hmm. This would have probably, like, fucking caught me off guard if it was still, like, save the kids. But, dude, at this point, mm. I think everyone that I've ever talked about, at least 70% of them have threatened to sue. I did this Mama Max video, like, covering his weird pedophile hunting grip. Yeah. Yeah. Threatens, like, talks about a million-dollar civil lawsuit. I'm like, dude. I'm like, at this point, I'm, I hope every single month out of my YouTube career I get threatened with a lawsuit. I, I want to be the fucking South Park of this platform. Where, well, that's like, when you... That's when you know you're kicking the right hornet's nest, though, because the, it's all the people that are so that are so quickly to threaten to sue, especially coming from someone like you, you know, mm-hmm. who is has a moral foundation. You do work, you spend time researching, you do your investigations. It's not like it's some fucking thirteen year old faceless anon just like talking shit, like making up stories about someone no. being a Peter. Like you're an adult that has a face that's like making these videos, trying to expose things that you think should be put in the limelight because they're, they're wrong or they're not yeah. right. And so like when you're, when you're acting with that, when you're, when you're acting with that sort of foundation going into it and someone's like, Oh, uh, slander, I'm going to sue. Like, well, you, you're kind of just like, it feels, you know, I, I just feel like people that are that so happy, like instead of being like, oh, well, no, this is why you're wrong. Here's why you're wrong. Here's the receipts. Let's talk about it. Like threatening to sue is like the ultimate, oh, well, you, you got me. And now I'm panicking and flailing my limbs. And that's yeah, really all I can do it, is talk it, about lawyers and try to scare you out of pursuing it, it further. It's like even even with like a threat, I'm like, I'm sitting there. I'm like, dude, listen, at the end of the day, we can go fucking toe to toe with a legal team. Like I, I had a talk with a lawyer about an international defamation case after yeah. all of it. And they're like, you just got to make sure you have half a million ready to fucking put in isolation. 
you know, <laughs> until like a slap suit gets your way. Dude, it's, it is, cr- yeah, I don't even want that rabbit hole of litigation and how much money that costs. I know, I know your friends and you've worked with Steven Coffeezilla probably a fair amount. Mm-hmm. Is, is he in that same boat where he's probably getting threatened nonstop I, with lawsuits? Well, I think Especially because the guys yeah. he's talking about a lot of times have a lot of money. Every case we've covered, we've always we've both faced the fucking umbrella litigation, <laughs> and it's always just a laugh off, right? It's like the I cease remember, and desist, whatever the fuck it is. Oh, the yeah. cease and desist are the funniest because I remember the, when the cease and desist happened. The first time I got it, I was like, "This is when I was like freaked out." So I hit up like Ethan Klein because I know he went through lawsuits. Yes, and like Ethan was like, he just told me like exactly what a cease and desist was. He's like, "Are you in the right?" And I, like I showed him the evidence, he's like, "Then don't fucking abide by it. Like you don't need yeah, to." Then I'm like, "All right, do cool. not cease or desist." <laughs> yeah, like, I, and then I did it, and then the, and then they immediately back off. One of the best things is like it's after a, it's a muscle tactic. That's really all for people that are you know, well, if you actually have a case. Well, now now with like now because we have like good lawyers that we're in contact with over here, so it's like now usually if somebody brings up a legal team to me, I'm always like I call up my lawyer. I'm like, "Hey, this is their legal team." And within the hour, he's like, yeah, it's an ambulance chaser. We don't have to fucking worry about it. So we're <laughs> they just chat GPT that shit, dude. You're fine. <laughs> dude, bro, when I was talking to Max and he's like, my lawyer is chat GPT. I was like, bro, there's this fist went through this fucking monitor in my brain. I was like, I am fuck Because that's like fucking hour and a half of my life. Great fucking recorded call, by the way. I don't want to pretend yeah. that it wasn't. But Jesus Christ. I'm like, he wanted us to get involved with, like, publicly calling some dude a pedophile. I'm like, bro, I've got shit to lose. Like, I'm not going to fucking yes. open up a case here. Then, like, show me the whole case. And the whole case is the flimsiest crap that I've ever seen. <laughs> that guy was, like, one of the most unhinged nut jobs. Um, and it was weird because, like, he was one of the only guys where I'm like, we weren't, like, super duper close, but close enough that, like, he was in, like, a friend circle. And I guess sure. it just didn't pay attention. And I'm like, oh, you're really a fucking unhinged nut job. I didn't, yeah. uh, I didn't pay I attention actually, for a week. I've known, Ma- I've known Max off and on for years. We randomly w- ran in the same circles in like 2016, 17 YouTube when we both had like, you know, 10, 20,000 YouTube subs. Back at like we, Quackity HQ. Like, like a lot of people, it's so weird to see w- people's path over the years. But yeah, you know, there was a point I always appreciated certain elements of his editing aesthetic but as time went on you know i never really kept in touch with them at all since like 17 i it seemed once that like the pedo hunter thing started happening i was always a little bit wary of i don't know it's just you know the pedo it, hunter shit is so weird it's like fucking it is dude. you get like maybe i feel like there's maybe like what fucking a few people in that camp that i think actually do it for the right reasons because like right. it is the easiest fucking Thing to succeed on with youtube it's like what are you going up against the people the worst possible people in society some of the worst <laughs> types of characters you, yeah, true. it's like when people are like yeah i love chris hansen he's such a great journalist i'm like hey he had a fucking team working for him and b true. when you're standing across a pedophile you're gonna look like the greatest fucking tv show host yeah time, and you're gonna right? feel like a boss like it's not hard to sit down across for, uh, like across a table from one of the weakest losers you've ever seen in your life and try to boss them into fucking making a fool of themselves like the second i know you're just just like a fucking introverted loser. I don't want to introvert is not the right word because that's not a negative thing, but like a, pe- you know what I'm saying? It's like, you're not, it's not like a hardened murderous, murderous criminal. Like you're sitting across the table from it's like a fucking, yeah. When you're bullying somebody that's just going to sit down and be meek when you're bullying me on, you're not the just hardest the guy ever. Fucking people on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like when you're bullying fucking neon, it's like, you can't how, like when Vitaly's like pushing him around, I'm like, how, do, how, Vitaly to me is like the weirdest guy too because he's just like a fucking absolute dipshit muscle head where mm-hmm. it's like when he acts like a dude of like he beat up a fucking runner in Miami bro like some poor girl got her fucking face like rearranged by dude, this idiot what? that fucking story was crazy and all I remember is it was like a female runner unprompted he just like absolutely smashed this girl's face in yeah, he was just that, like he assaulted somebody from my understanding. Well, he and he was high on something because obviously it's okay. fucking Vitaly. Let's not. It's probably bath salts yeah. or something. Yeah. Like, well, yeah just, well, did you see his mug shot? He, he was, was like all fucking. Up, yeah, yeah, he was just like smiling. Like he was just like fuck. He was rapping in the fucking car when they were like driving him from his house to the fucking Miami detention center. Like, is there a body cam of that? I there is. Know. There's a body cam of him in the fucking car. Actually, it's crazy. Oh God, that's probably so old now. But I've been dabbling in some, you know, and, some and that, body cam stuff. And now he's so outside. He's like on kick and everything, and he's just like. 
Oh, yeah, now he's just turned into like the ad the adult version. Uh, I don't adults, maybe the, the grown up version of Neon and fucking Jack Doherty, like the IRL, like Ice Poseidon bullshit. Even the Jack Doherty stuff is like just so like I think the I, I think one of the weirdest things about like the whole kick community and the like these streamers is just I feel like I feel like even train wrecks and a lot of the people that started kick Aiden Ross, yeah. I feel like they even like have realized it's kind of a dumb idea to have this many unhinged people making a no, I think themselves. I think they're kind of they're they're having to deal you know they're basically reaping what they've sown in in a little in in some yeah. way like they they marketed it initially as like the twitch alternative like we're not going to ban you for accidentally showing a boob for half a second like yeah we're like the platform and they're spending shit loads of money on these top streamers cuz they're funded by stake which is like one of the most profitable online gambling fucking casinos on the planet yeah and like I get that it's a the business model makes sense, but now, I don't in in a way like, at first I'm all about it. I'm like oh cool like it's good healthy competition. We need alternatives to Twitch because there is some bullshit policy in regulation at Twitch that I think is stupid, and I love this idea of you know being able to go to kick and have a little more freedom. But then you see how quickly that attracts just the worst fucking pieces of shit on the planet. And, and it made me kind of rethink, like, maybe I shouldn't be so critical of certain policies that I don't like, because when you remove all of them, you just become this breeding ground for shitheads. Yeah. And, you know, we spoke about that earlier, you know, these, these, these websites and these places that, like, you know what, they should be allowed to exist as long as there's nothing... You know, I feel like, I feel the, like the marketing or something crazy going on, but uh, yeah, I feel like the marketing shouldn't be like, oh, this is a pl this is a safe haven for the banned people because then all you're ever gonna get <laughs> yeah, yeah, are that, the people that get fucking banned, and then you wonder, a tough oh, marketing tactic. That's sure. why they got banned because they're making yeah. this shit here. But even Rumble, like that was kind of Rumble's marketing for conservatives, but they're like they didn't. I don't know, and I guess I haven't really been on Rumble much lately, but I mean, it, it feels like. It kind of yeah. worked for them in a way the because there was the best like the best type of website is when you can just get a whole market of like normies to flood it right. You're yeah. always going to have extremes. You're always going to have like the craziest of both sides. But as long as the average person can go to a website like Storyfire, YouTube, yeah, uh, daily whatever website exists, as long as they see normal, nonpartisan like content that exists just for entertainment. Yes. That's what's going to get you, right? Like 100%. One of the one of the videos like the type of videos that I like to watch are like these 5-hour like gaming like uh like the the these retrospectives like people like dig up some fucking old game from the 90s and they dive into it for 4 hours. I usually just have it on the side as I'm working on something. Yep. And I'm like that's that's just one aspect of content where like nobody's getting into like any fringe extremes. They're not on the verge of getting banned. It's just some dude's autism going crazy for five hours about some Love piece it. of media. Love that shit. And then, you know, you got videos of people doing travel vlogs or the kind of content that, like, attracts everyone. And it's the, I don't want to just say, like, the safest, but also, like, the, it, it's the, it's content that could never garner controversy, you know? Like, that's right. And it's, that's it's not like they're not intentionally avoid, like, this is just maybe something that they're passionate about that they love to do. Yeah. And that's, I think that that is the most accessible type of content because, you know, some of the controversial stuff is interesting because it can be so lucrative to just take a hard stance and draw a line in the sand and then hammer that type of content on mm -hmm. some political side of the, you know, on some one side of the political aisle. And, and, you know, I, I struggle with the idea that, how, you know how many people are doing that because they genuinely believe what they're saying, yeah. or or the audience versus, captured versus them. how many people are doing that because they know that there is just this huge pool of people that they are going to have direct access to mm -hmm. simply by having this very polarizing opinion. Well, that's that's and when then they like, can yeah. monetize that. Well, that's what happens. It's like the creators that end up doing that, like they let their audience completely capture them. And yep. so what, ha like, yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. what happens with like guys like Sneeko, right? Like, do I, yep. Sneeko is dumb enough where I think like he believes what he says, but like guys like the fresh and fit dudes, right? Like Myron Gaines <laughs> or whatever. I genuinely don't think that guy believes what he preaches because you know. like, 
he's not a dumb person. Like I've heard him talk. He can be articulate. Yeah. Guy's a former fucking DHS operative, right? Like you he's have to audience have... captured though, like yeah, you said, exactly. because he can't stray or else his business model is wrecked. He can't go out and say, "Hey guys, women, some women can be awesome. Having a relationship can be fruitful." Because then right? the imagine, audience... hey, here, hey guys, here's a little yeah. bit of nuance. And not every woman is a slut. Imagine that. I mean, and that's <laughs> the lose, thing. Like he'd lose eighty percent of his audience like, overnight. Like when I cover like Andrew Tate stuff or whatever, right? Like yeah. the amount of people that get into comments and they're like, "Oh, you're just a fucking soy idiot." I'm like, same. I will love to take any heat that i can because the if i ever have to fucking kiss the ring and pretend to be nice just to get those videos gain subscribers right 100%. but it's a difference between like if i'm critical i gained like a thousand subscribers on that video versus like ten thousand i would much rather take a nine thousand subscriber deficit you know in terms of my gain just so i don't have nine thousand people that i have to be irrationally fucking misogynistic that, to, you yeah, that, that now want to pull the strings and make you dance for them. Yeah. And that's the problem <laughs> that I see with like some creators like, you know, Sneeko, the Tates or whatever, uh, you know, even people like Tucker Carlson, right? Like, I don't think Tucker mm. believes half the stuff that he says, but it's like, once you're in that camp, once you've already made like fucking crazy outlandish fringe statements, right? You're going to have to fucking be stuck making it. That's it. Like, even with like Elon Musk, right? Like, do I think half the shit that Elon says on Twitter does? He, does he, no, I don't think so. But you know, he's put himself into this camp where he has to respond to like fucking the craziest types of people and say interesting makes sense, right? Like, it's just once you let your audience get you get you like that, you're never getting out of it. And same with like a lot of these platforms and everything. It's one of the reasons why like any time like. There's other platforms that have come out, like Odyssey, for instance, other actual like competitors to YouTube. I would say from a tech perspective, we're there, but they always build themselves as like, we're the alternative free speech platform. And right. I love free speech. Don't get me wrong. Great. But sometimes I feel like the people that champion the free speech model just want it to be a place where they can reduce the TOS to nothing, you know? Right. And yeah. I definitely think there's some, there's some, yeah, I yeah. would agree with that. I mean, that. There's, there's just nuance. Like, free speech is great. I, I think when it comes to YouTube, I think the amount of speech we get is, it's it's good enough. Like, it's it's not, we're not at a point where it's like 1984 yet. Obviously, sure. there are some topics where, like, I just don't cover, not because out of a fear of monetization, but like, you know, if I wanted to talk about, I don't know, the fucking Scientology conspiracy, right? Uh, yeah. we're delving into like crazy conspiracy theories that like YouTube would probably re remove because of a bot. But yeah. in general, I'm fine. Right. In like I made a video like, uh, three, four months ago, where I was looking at a North Korean, like VX nerve agent assassination. And I was able to show footage of the guy being assassinated without YouTube destroying the video. Um, interesting. Did they know, age gate it? They age gated it for like 20 minutes until I like wrote them. I'm like, I literally got this from the New York, post like it's on yeah. their fucking like youtube channel and they're like oh it makes sense okay you can show it and, yeah and, you go ahead i was just gonna say youtube I, I, you know i have such a love-hate relationship with youtube as as any like i think rational person does that's making somewhat authentic content that's not just trying to fucking please the algorithm because mm -hmm. you know they they've given me a lot and I personally don't deal with things that are very ideologically extreme. So like, I don't have to worry about much outside of the language, anything I'm talking about, brainworm stuff related to fighting, maybe some violent stuff. And then a lot of things sexual in nature. That's always been what I've dealt with monetization wise. Right. But I do, you know, I don't know, looking back at the history of YouTube, I think the way they handled different things like, Obviously, COVID was a big one and people, anyone that was creating content that was counter to whatever particular narrative seemed to be mainstream like that. Part, part of me wants to understand because it had they, they're put in a very difficult position because their entire revenue model is advertiser based. Mm -hmm. So you ha they have to protect that. Well, I think at the same time, trying to do what they can to not alienate the people that make their website great, which is you and I and all of the users and people that create content. And you know, I, I don't think people give them enough credit or see enough nuance to realize, like, 
I don't know. Like as much as I want to be like, fuck you. Like, let me, let me say what I want and all this stuff. Like yeah. I listen, it's an advertiser model. Like if you want to, if, if all these people that fucking cry and moan about not being able to say what they want on YouTube, well go start a site with a paywall and make your money that way. Like you're I, literally, I mean, like I, there is an element of yeah. you being on their platform. You aren't entitled. Yeah. Like, like so uh, from I, that perspective, I think they've given yeah. a decent amount of freedom. I mean, it, the amount of stuff I feel some people have this weird thing where they overly censor themselves. Like, sure. Well, a funny thing about like the whole Sneeko stuff, like he censored the R word from his like video. <laughs> so part of the joke in my video, I'm like, what do you mean? Like the word, like I actually said it, like I just straight up like threw oh, it out. retard. Yeah. No, like the, <laughs> Like I was just like I was like rape that word oh that, that word word? yeah okay yeah. and then, like it's funny because like YouTube <laughs> put the mid roll there's multiple now. <laughs> <laughs> well YouTube put the mid roll right there like right after I said it it's like I just go rape and then it's like the mid roll <laughs> place so he's like he's saying it because like I just don't want to get like my video like ad it's like, like a like, fucking ad for Plan yeah. B that comes yeah up. exactly <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like sitting there I'm like wait a minute why are you so scared of that word because I watch some of these like podcasts where they cover serious like cases is like you know fucking uh, H3 podcast will have like a segment where they cover fucking uh, these like crazy Minecraft fucking Epstein allegations or something yeah, or yeah. any YouTuber will and like they're always replacing words to like grape or like essay and I'm like dude if 100%. I gotta fucking sit here and have a glossary on even the side, corn, like you can't say porn everyone calls it corn now yeah like everyone exactly everyone has switched out the words and like I get it from like if you're titling and descript like that's gonna get your video up, but like in the middle of the piece of content, like especially like a longer piece of content that's not the focal point. Like I hate the idea that you can't just speak freely like that. Yeah. And I think that you probably can, but people are just so conditioned yeah. now to over censor, like you said. Well, th that's one of the reasons why like I have my day job and my business out of here because like yeah. I fucking hate the so one of the videos I made and this is like years ago I made a video on like this trafficking hub conspiracy I should probably follow up on it ever since Pornhub got a ban in Texas so this uh it was all related to like this crazy like I want to say this right wing super religious group yeah. one of their representatives was like hey you want to co cover like fucking trafficking hub with us right like is Pornhub like trafficking minors mm, and I'm like I remember this yep. kind of a crazy story sure let me look into it well the, the story is this group wanted all porn banned off the internet. And I'm like, I don't believe mm. in that. Like, I think mm -hmm. there was a fair ground that I made in my video. I'm like, all these sites should do is block new accounts from uploading content and just sure. relegate Need it to some like, sort of verification process. Yeah, to which is yep. what they did right after I made the video. Uh -huh. I want to say months after. And I'm like, great decision right there. Yeah. Um, because they were like, man, do you want to block? I'm like, I don't want to block it. Like I actually talked to people that were in the porno pornographic industry. Right. And it's sure. like, you got big names who were spreading out misinformation. So I just pretty much laid out the facts. I'm like, this is the middle ground. You just ban people. Because I showed how easy it was to upload a piece of content to their website and ads started playing on it, right? Right, without like, any sort of moderation. Or, no yeah. moderation, no nothing. They would say that they verify, like one of the statements was they verify every piece of video. And I'm like, that is such an insane fucking thing to say. How yeah, do you, impossible. as the largest pornographic website in the world, moderate every clip that gets uploaded? Like, what the fuck? No. And it was such a touchy subject because I'm talking to, like, these actual, like, victims. Like, this one girl who was, like, they have a video of me of, like, 13 on the website. And I'm like, how did you get rid of it? She's like, well, I sent so many, like, removal requests. The email never responded. She had the bright idea of impersonating a lawyer and just sending a legal, like, notice. Yeah. Within an hour, the fucking site was like, what? Okay, Media yeah, we'll get off. rid of it. Because yeah. I'm like... That's fucking smart. Everyone's going to respond to their legal <laughs> fucking of address. Course. You know? Yeah. Like, if something comes in my email, maybe I'll look at it. If something comes in legal, like, oh, I'm fucking there. Some I'm... official legal statement that looks official? Yeah. yeah I'm probably perking up a little bit. So, you know, they, they fucking removed that site out. And, like, that was the one video where I'm like, I shot it the night before. I edited it overnight. And then, it, well, I started editing it at, like, 1 in the morning. And I finished at 6 p.m., no sleep, Jesus. no nothing, uploaded it, laid in bed, video instantly demonetized, age-gated later, dead in the algorithm. But I'm like, of course, I felt satisfied because I'm like, I got it out. I didn't have to make it look like some fucking censored Fisher Price version of the story. Yeah. And it was an yeah. infinitely better fucking video project to work on. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. I go through the same thing. Even the, like the most recent video I just uploaded was a, a brainworms video, and there was a part that was like a little bit heavy profanity, and the guy was like accosting another girl, saying like "fuck you, ho," like that type of stuff. And like 
I mildly censored it to be like, all right, he please the YouTube gods. And then I uploaded it and it got like age restricted. So then I had to like censor it more. And this whole time, I'm just like, I feel like so emasculated. Like, I hate that I have to do it. But at the same time, I don't, and that's to your point, like, and I know you, you know, you have a cybersecurity background, you have, you have, you own a company, you have a day job. And I think I, my goal in doing even just this podcast and wanting to grow something that's very authentic, whatever that looks like is to get to a point where I can outgrow the need or not even the need. I don't need to, I can upload a couple demonetized videos. It's not going to kill me, but to just have the idea of not monetizing a video be so inconsequential that it's like whatever, because I think that is true. Even when, it, even if it's like once a month where I'm like, I have to pull a few extra strings to really tighten down the hatches so I can keep it monetized. Mm -hmm. that, I'm just like, I feel like I'm, my fucking balls are like tucked up inside of my stomach and I hate it. So I've had, I used to be worse. I'm very much more liberal now with what I let slip through. And, and sometimes I just take the L and fucking the videos yell or whatever. And it is what it is. I don't care. Cause it's, if it's really going to ruin the essence of the video, I'm not going to do that. Obviously. Yeah. That, that's really where I test it at. Cause usually I'll just like blur out like a, a swear here and there. Like, yeah, I don't blur out my swears, but I'll blur out anybody else. that's like fucking swearing sure. in the video. I'm like, I leave the, I leave the F swear jar for me. That budget is for me and me only. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I want not that for budget, anybody baby. that's, I get to use the word, not you on this fucking channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah. When I go blur shit out, but other than that, it's like I, and I believe I had the same discussion with like Umpaville and everyone too. He's like very much more regimented in the YouTube like algorithm and understanding like what works. Like we're talking scientific Mr. Beast levels. Yeah, oh yeah, he runs a tight ship over there, man. He's got quite yeah. the operation going on. But like even with him, it's like you know, fucking if the video, if like if it ruins the essence of what he's covering, because like if you're gonna, dude, if you're gonna cover EDP four four five. Right. Expect the video to get fucking half the yellow. fucking thing, right? Yeah, yeah, like he's already swearing. Then the whole subject matter is him fucking. Yeah. You, you expect no money on that video. Expect limited money on that video, <laughs> right. and then walk. And just be proud of it, okay? That's yeah. all you get out of that. But, is a little bit of. Pride. But sometimes YouTube surprises me. Like I remember I did the fucking with the Max video. I'm like, man, I'm covering a case involving human trafficking and cults, and and then I do I upload that video, demonetize, I leave. And I come back like an hour later and it's just green. Like YouTube they sends a little it. email. They're like, nope, this one's fine. We love trafficking. I, I didn't, <laughs> dude, I didn't even send a manual review. They're like, no, no, no. I think you've, you got a mistake. This is good enough. You can cover this. It's fine. You didn't even submit it for review. They just did it themselves. There's a lot of videos like that. Like Andrew Tate stuff is funny. Like I always demonetize every Andrew Tate video because I'm like, bro, of course the subject matter is going to get like the Sneeko yeah. video is all demonetized. I'm like, whatever. It's yeah. yellow, yellow. Because I, I know, like, okay, I put effort into, like, videos that are going to get, like, 200,000 views, 250, 300,000, yeah. and the Sneeko stuff will get, like, a million. I'm like, whatever, yellow it. I, for me, the profit is, like, more in the subscriber game. Like, I'm like, I'll I'll Yeah, I'll the, in that. the credibility of someone who's making content for the people instead yeah. of just for the paycheck, right? So Yeah, so I'm like, it can go out there, and then, like, fucking, you'll leave for an hour, and YouTube's like, no, no, misogyny's cool right now. It's a fucking in thing this month. Go yell <laughs> yeah, it. Go green. <laughs> misogyny's fucking lucrative, baby. I'm telling you, that's just <laughs> like, like, yeah. like with the sneaker video, I was wild. I'm like, I just screamed out like as much. Like I showed the gun here. Like I'm like, dude, everything is willing to get fucked. They were like, all right, cool. You know, green, green it up, baby. Like, and, and sometimes like I'll email the fucking YouTube rep. I'm like, what's fucking going on here? They're like, I don't know, dude. The the fucking <laughs> review system is a mystery black hole that we haven't fucking figured out yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. I have speaking of lucrative. And you, you, you've been an absolute joy, and you're so easy to talk to, and I appreciate you giving me some of your time tonight. So I'll, this, I'll, I'll phrase this as my last question, and it's a bit of a pivot. But mm -hmm. I know you have a cybersecurity background. You're very in it online, so to speak. I know you probably have some sort of crypto assets in your portfolio. You've probably spent time with crypto. You've done plenty of videos about crypto scams. Generally, how do you feel about my crypto? cryptographically secured magic internet money is it going to go to zero or is there a future for decentralized finance and blockchain technology i think there is a pretty good future so first off i want to just say like as much as i've covered crypto scams i love the technology 
Same. I it's love exactly the blockchain same technology. Yeah. Yeah. NFTs, I've shit on NFTs a million times, but I love the backend technology that works. I think it could be applicable for like digital, digital licensing. Digital ownership, yeah. basically. Digital yep. licensing, I think it could be yep. absolutely great for. Yep. That said... Uh, do I see, I don't think the crypto market's ever going to go to zero. I think it'll always have a place. Um, yes. the thing that gives it, uh, its legitimacy is that there are countries now where cryptocurrency can be used as an actual asset to purchase other assets. What gives any currency power is the ability to exchange it for good services or actual tangible assets and assets. I mean, like high quality, like fucking homes even, right? Like real estate right. and whatnot. If you can trade it for that, it'll always have a value. Bitcoin's fucking shooting to the moon right now, more yeah. than it ever has been. And well, I'm, the ETF, I for me, I feel like the ETF really solidified it in the traditional finance space is something that's not going away because mm -hmm. now you have BlackRock, who basically owns half the world, like however you feel about them, yeah. uh, you know, applying for the ETF. And now you have all these people coming out. So now, now... The now Bitcoin has become a traditional financial vehicle of investment. Yeah, I mean, right? what, so well, that, once the institution gets involved, then it's going to have that's value, it. right? Like, so now there's like no way it can go to zero. Now yeah. it's basically all this this narrative of digital gold mm -hmm. is now kind of validated by this creation of the ETF. Uh, I think, which is speaking of Bitcoin, and then obviously you have. Ethereum, the top 10 majors, other mm -hmm. blockchains, and the m billion other fucking vaporware coins that exist because obviously there's, you know, no, there's yeah. very uh, zero barrier to entry of someone who well, wants to create a fucking crypto well, coin. One of obviously. the things with coins is that I don't think the benefit of, if, if Bitcoin was always meant to be an anonymous money, like uh, sharing a coin or Monero yeah. or anything, I don't think that has any value because like, here's the thing before i want to say there's a lot of bad stuff in crypto when it comes criminals use it a lot for money exchanges moving money from country to country laundering whatnot right there's a lot of bad actors for any money system to work you need to make sure that it is it is in a state where it can be used for good more than it can be for bad right like canada for mm -hmm. instance has a lot of uh, KYC AML checks on crypto, right? Like you can't buy right. crypto in Canada uh, without giving up your identity. You have the to. U.S. too quite yeah. a bit as far as any sort of exchange you can use without a VPN. You got to do some sort of KYC. Yeah, so there are a lot of big areas you got to do KYC, and I'm sure there's exchanges you have all over the world where you can fucking purchase without any name and whatnot. But yep. it's dwindling <clears throat> more and more. I think even the most like fucking no matter what political like leaning any government has or whatever background of, uh, you know, they could be like Russia, you know, where they're like technically a democratic country, but we know they're not. Even yep. they will have to do KYC AML checks just to make sure that like less criminals are using this digital asset because in order for it to be respected and used to buy homes, cars, anything of value, you need to make sure that those adic adequate like things are in check, right? Like money that we have today, like uh, any money, it's all traceable, right? Like you can't fucking hide a dollar if you're putting it into a bank, right? It takes a second for the government to subpoena the information and figure out just what and where your money is. And well, I, I would say that crypto is the same way, except that you're able to use it without having a digital footprint. Like you can have you can just be an address with yeah. nothing connected to that address where to have a bank account to be able to transact actual currencies like you have to tie your identity to that so that's kind of the disparity i think with crypto and i think part of the appeal for a lot of people is the decentralized anon nature of it which can be incredible but like like you said obviously that can enable nefarious actors well, to use can, it for you things. can still be identified with that but what it does with crypto versus traditional banks is it gives you more access to your money is all 100%. right like it gets you more like you think about it like this right like if i if i want to do something money related right now i have to and at this point like at my bank like all i have to do is text my fucking finance manager the bank and they'll do whatever i set out to yeah. but that's still involving like a step i still have to go through an entire institution to manage and move the money around versus yeah. something like crypto where i could have my whole team you know my my cfo could sit down and do all of those things in a day in a night 
in, in real time, right in front it of it would me, happen you know? in seconds. Yeah, exactly. Like I could send I could send you know USDC on Arbitrum or some L two or any any network to somebody mm -hmm. in Romania or Russia, and it would happen in seconds. Well, just like, like this. Well, like the thing is, if I wanted to invest something, right? Like we started the skincare brand, me, uh, Gamer from Mars, Umpavel. That's and right. I, I heard that part on yeah. the unsubscribe podcast, and I were, <laughs> God, I could talk to you all night, but I won't get into that. I want to talk more about that another time, so I'll have to yeah. have you back. But go but, ahead. But yeah. when we started, it was. Was like you know we had to go through a whole bunch of steps on like obviously incorporating a company getting everything set up investments yep. and everything even just for like investments right like you know going into a fucking bank doing a traditional wire transfer from like fucking one country to another it's brutal when you could just be at home like pull out your phone and be like hey you need this seed money cool blah 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 what's your address five Send buttons it. yeah gone and you know the transaction goes just like that instantly. Yeah, and the fees are basically nothing depending on what network you're using, yeah, of course. <laughs> but that's where I think the institutions are great. Once you got like the big guys into it, those fees are yep. going to dwindle down to fucking nothing down the road, you know? Like, oh, yeah. Right now, the yep. fees are so bad or they used to be even worse, I would say, is because it was all just a bunch of people in a fringe, mar in a fringe community you know, running this uh, whole thing together, right? It was, you yeah. know, now we have JP Morgan. We have like the biggest people in the game who are leveraging their networks and resources to basically run this finance. And to be fair, when we started the NFT and Ethereum stuff, that's when it was really computationally expensive. Now we've yep. developed new ways for it to not be so, I guess, energy inefficient so that whole fucking criticism right. can go out yeah they moved better. to proof proof of work proof of, yeah they uh, moved to like, and so that whole argument of the energy expenditure ethereum kind of cured that and then it was more like network fees and congestion mm -hmm. how do you scale something that's decentralized without the fees being basically making the the layer one or mm -hmm. the network unusable for people because it's costing you three hundred dollars yeah. just to fucking swap something now you have layer twos and uh, to me it, it's all just technological advancements like i know obviously this this comparison is made a lot but you talk about like tcip and early internet how this technology was burgeoning and it created some incredible you know nascent tech that that was kind of cha subtly changing the world at the time but it was accompanied mm -hmm. by grifts and scammers everywhere you looked and you had mm -hmm. the bubble in 2000 and then that shit fucking crashed but out of that crash came the technology that didn't go anywhere the grifters and the scammers yeah. might have like gotten fleeced out and certainly some still still stuck around but that technology that has now gone on you know 20 to 30 years later to essentially reshape the fabric of how we live our lives yeah. and i you know i'm not some sort of grandiose like oh i think blockchains gonna you know 30 years from now it's gonna change how everyone lives their life but i do think in a i do think we are in the the period of the shift from traditional financial markets to being, more electronic being place, built yeah. on the backbone of blockchain technology and i you know it's weird because crypto purists i think uh, where their whole thing is just like self-custody decentralization and they don't like the fact that blackrock and institutions are getting involved because mm -hmm. they see them as centralized leeches that are coming to try and control their technology mm -hmm. right but then there's the other piece of it that's like well if you want this thing to actually be something that matters it needs adoption by institutional players well, so it's think like about like the internet example in you gave right like when the before the bubble crashed the web 1.0 era we lived in yeah you know, how many data centers were carrying the fucking internet, right? Right. Not that many. Nowadays, it's right. like, you know, for better or for worse, look, I don't trust big a lot of these big tech firms and how they manage and police their data centers anyways, but mm -hmm. we leverage their technology and fucking assets and their fucking mega, you know, structures in order to run the internet. Dude, if Amazon right. exactly. goes down today... If Amazon went down right now, 50% <laughs> of the internet's fucking gone. Fucking offline. <laughs> but Amazon is the one, it's one of the big cloud providers alongside Google, alongside Microsoft, Facebook, and yep. plenty of others that keep this whole internet dream that we love alive. We could not do this podcast. We could not make money on the internet if it wasn't for a lot of these big cloud providers that managed 100%. to build the video sharing platforms, the internet sites that we fucking love. Reddit, back then, Reddit used to be forum sites. You have to go to every individual forum site for every individual fucking topic. Now you yep. go to reddit.com, you, you just have easy access to all fucking kinds of niches. 
given yep. to you by one big fucking like you know firm that runs that specific niche of the internet same yep. with youtube same with twitch kick riverside even right like all these platforms exist on the backbones of some of these large data centers these institutions that ended up making the internet a net you know more better uh obviously you know everything comes with its negatives of course but of course. the internet is better as of now than it ever would have been right yes yeah, and I think that that's kind of this. I for me the centralization versus like versus decentralization. They're both, they both come with their their perks and their cons. Mm -hmm. Where like you know sometimes it's these centralized entities that can like Amazon that are creating uh, companies that are making people's life easier. They're like you said creating places where we can do this on the internet. But it also the drawback being they be it's like a single point of failure. Now, certainly they ha they have built in redund redundancy, I'm sure, with their servers and stuff like that. But, you know, you think about when it comes to like censorship and stuff, that's kind of like the gospel of the, the crypto purists is like, well, the point of these networks, Ethereum de decentralization is that it's a network being run by people like you and I, Anon yeah. people that are running fucking servers in their little office that is helping keep this network alive. And for me, there's something so beautiful about that but the con of that is the, it is so difficult to scale something like that because I, I don't know. You look at things like DAOs and things that are like run by where it's like, you know, these entities that are just like, we'll just put all the responsibility on the users of the network and it's a fucking disaster. Like there is sometimes a place where you need centralization and a, and a power hierarchy to create a functioning business to scale and create things and ideate things that are amazing. So it's try, trying to kind of like find the balance between that where, and I don't know what that's going to look like. I think eventually like a lot of the web two stuff we're used to using now mm -hmm. will have some sort of web three integration where like the friction of using web three, like the wallets and all this stuff will be abstracted. And a lot of the end users won't know that they're even using blockchain technology because hopefully we've gotten to a place where it's, it's the technology is become more frictionless i mean think about but it like I this just, right I, like ever since people have got like smartphones and everything i mean more and more sites are starting to adopt more passkey technology so it's like yes fucking i signing into my youtube channel all i have to do is like it just tells me hey you got a ping on your phone look at my phone for a second already signed in i feel Love like it. once wallets get to that point once like <laughs> yep. using once something becomes like a one tap one touch go like something like yes. apple pay almost you're fucking good you know that's it. That's and that's that's it's like the it's the gold rush yeah. to be the company that does that. Like, bro, if I you know, like Apple Pay is one of those things where like fucking uh, me and Jen, we because she's an American, I'm a Canadian. Our Apple accounts are fucking different countries. Yep. And I can't Apple Pay or do anything back and forth with her because fucking country just because it's cross border. Cross border, exactly. It's a cross border <laughs> it's account. Crazy. Even if I'm living in the United States at the time, and I'm like, man, I can't do it because my account. If we had a crypto thing, right? Then yeah, I could just, just like that. I could send her like a twenty buck thing through like iMessage. She could redeem mm -hmm. it to her wallet instantly. That's yeah. the kind of stuff that I would love to see out of it, right? Yeah, I think we're less than three to four years away from that with the way some of the moves Coinbase is making, and even obviously, as you know, the, this podcast I've been uploading on mm -hmm. Storyfires. I've been working with them, and one of the reasons I'm working with them is because they are one of the people in the race to try and integrate web three technology in kind of a web two social platform in a way yeah. that is uh, accessible to people. And, you know, it's early stages, it's nascent and there's a lot of shit that's fucking crazy, but I, I like that vision, whether it, what, however that happens, mm -hmm. I, I think it's inevitable in some ways. And I'm excited to try and be at least a part of, you know, the process, what, whatever, whatever happens with story fire. And, you know, I'm pumped about making this podcast and it's exciting to be working on something. I know like a lot of people that hear story fire, they think, um, make jugger nuggets and all that shit. Yeah. Like, it's it's already been but gotten like kind of a tainted history. A hundred percent. But you know, and, and that's understandable, but just from what I've seen in some of the people, like the guy who actually owns it, the guy who owns it now is like a, he's a, he's a crypto OG with a portfolio of companies that is very like, in this mind space that I appreciate. Mm -hmm. So, and they have a pretty, they have, they got a great team of people working on it right now. So that's been fun. I won't, I'm not going to, I'll talk with you about that sometime if you want off camera, but listen, what a treat to be able to chat with you, man. It's been fucking two hours. It's felt like 10 minutes. Yeah, I don't for know, real? Whatever. You're, you're an ideal <laughs> guest because it's made my job very fucking easy, dude. <laughs>
No, so, sometimes I know I know doing our podcast, like sometimes you have a guest where it's like you have to like, come on, say something. What the fuck? Oh, I'm dude, thinking. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, so I'm four in, and I've been lucky so far because I've had most mostly just my wife and then my friends who I know are good people. So it's like eventually I'm going to get to a point where I'm bringing on people I don't know that well, and I'm going to have to really be like <laughs> fucking po- to poking the dead bear. Like, please say something. You're like pulling God. teeth. Like I'm talking about <laughs> something you're interested yeah. in. What the fuck? Yeah. And they're just over there like. Yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I yeah. Agree. You're like, fuck. You know, let me just play it. I'm just going to play a video and we'll just sit here and watch together. How's that sound? <laughs> oh, my God. I know. <laughs> yeah. No, but no, I really appreciate your time, Muda. Uh, thanks so much for coming on, man. Uh, just what a great conversation. Yeah, and really. I can't wait to have you on again sometime, man. Yeah, same here, man. Come on again on our podcast, dude. We love having you. Yeah. Too. Some ordinary. <laughs> yeah. Please. Some ordinary podcast. I've been on before and I'd like to go back because it's been shit over a year now. You, Nux, and Caleb, yeah. who I had on two weeks ago. And for those of you listening, still uh, some ordinary, some ordinary gamers. Obviously, you can uh, find him on YouTube. Is probably where most of your action happens. Yeah, and then occasionally you can find him on X browsing snuff films and only. Oh, absolutely! Ads. And fucking yeah. pussy and bio. I'm always <laughs> yeah, there. Pussy and bio, baby. <laughs> Good shit, man. Right. Appreciate it. We'll talk soon. Yeah, we'll do.